is a special presentation of ESPN on ABC. Exactly four months ago to the day, James Blackman had a cap and gown on at Glade Central High School in front of 1,000. Today, he performs for 75,000 in Tallahassee as the new quarterback for Florida State. As you're watching the ACC on ESPN, the Florida State Seminoles, with a three-week hiatus, will take on the NC State Wolfpack in the ACC opener on a hot one in Tallahassee, Florida. Thanks for joining us, Jason Benetti, Anthony Beck, along with you. Rocky Boyman is downstairs. We'll join him in a moment. And look, his teammates say he's ready. His coach believes he's ready. We'll find out together if James Blackman is indeed ready. Well, he's impressive in practice, number one. He's 6'5", and he has a huge arm. That's the one thing you're going to see in this football game. When that ball comes out of his hands, he can spin it. Now, not a lot of high school kids can throw 50 yards in a game. He tosses it up, makes it look easy in high school last year. He's going to have that arm. He's going to be whip he's got targets all over the field he's got to be a distributor and he's got to be careful with the blitz today he's a wiry guy 6'5 169 can still add some poundage and he hasn't seen much time at all yeah you're right three snaps no passes this is live bullets right now and when he talk about his defense going against North Carolina State this front seven 178 starts eight seniors there's a lot going on in this game for him he's got to be aware of some dangerous guys on the outside of that line for NC State. For more on that, we say hi to Rocky Boyman. Hi, Rock. Yeah, well, welcome to college football, James Blackman. Your prize is going up against, in my opinion, one of the best all-purpose defensive ends in the entire game. That's Bradley Chubb, six foot four, 275 pounds. And folks, he's not just one of those pretty speed rushers off the edge. He's all-purpose in his game. He plays the run on the opponent's side of the line of scrimmage with aggression. And then come third down, he'll get after your court back now with a sick inside move and Blackman and company better know where number nine is today. NC State trying to win against Florida State for the first time in five years. College football will continue after this message and a word from our ABC stations. It's been a while since we saw Chief Osceola and Renegade place that spear in the middle of Doak Campbell Stadium. A couple of games either postponed or canceled because of the effects of Hurricane Irma. Florida State with a three-week hiatus. Now we'll get the ball first today at Doak Campbell Stadium. As NC State won the toss and deferred to the freshman quarterback, Blackman. Kyle Bambard kicks it away, and this one muffed in the end zone. Special teams was a big issue in that loss to Alabama, and that is not the greatest start for the Seminoles. And here comes the freshman. He's 18 years old, doesn't turn 19 until November. The wiry James Blackman, Anthony. 6'5", 169 pounds, big arm. We talked about that. He can throw the ball, pocket vision. He can see over all the linemen. That's not the problem. The unknown, live bullets. Expect a lot of pressure from North Carolina State. Try to rattle him early. Try to get him off his game. This offensive line for Florida State's got to help this young man out. His tailback is Jacquez Patrick. And James Blackman, three running plays. After the injury, the patella tendon injury for Francois. First pass is complete to Nooney Murray. And you said it, Anthony. They have weapons on the outside. Early completions. Get him comfortable. Jimbo's going to try to get him so he feels like he's in practice. And you're right. Multiple receivers, big guys, fast guys, guys that can get the ball out into the field when they catch it and make plays without him putting it on his shoulders. We've heard the receivers over the last couple of weeks say Blackman's already been a vocal presence and somebody who could be a fantastic leader for Florida State as they'll keep it on the ground for Patrick and third down coming up as we take a look at our impact players today. Talked about Patrick, 6'3", 230 in the backfield. Tate, now he's 6'5", great target on the sidelines. We talked about Bradley Chubb on the outside. He's a force, but on the other end, you have Street, the other defensive end who brings power, great run stop ability again this front four in my opinion are all draftable NFL football players they played together for such a long time all seniors and we'll see if they come after Blackman 
As Jimbo Fisher expects, and the offensive line certainly did. It was Derek All Kelly, start. the senior. 74 yard penalty, third down. There's the rush, Jason, you talk about. You come on that 21-day hiatus. Guys are antsy. You got offensive linemen that want to get off the ball. And Jimbo Fisher, when you talked about him uh, through, throughout the week, he wanted to make sure these guys could get a clean start right there. An early jump off sides for this uh, outside tackle position. Derek Kelly, who just got offered right before his signing day and has turned into a pretty good one for Florida State. Now third down 11 for Blackman. NC State brings some pressure, and Blackman goes down at the 20-yard line. It's the senior out of Oathboro, North Carolina, B.J. Hill. Interior defensive lineman. Not only do you have Chubb and Street to worry about, but Jones and Hill, number 98. They run those games. The interior linemen have to find ways to block these two players. And NC State only rushed four on that play, Anthony. Florida State's offensive line is going to have a big-time trouble today if they can, can only block those four. As you see Jimbo Fisher doing some coaching on James Blackman, we saw him standing behind the line of scrimmage, coaching Blackman pretty hard in practice a couple of days ago as Naheem Hines lets this bounce. And NC State will get it after a 43-yard punt. It's the transfer from Boise State, Ryan Finley, who hasn't thrown an interception in 192 consecutive attempts. He doesn't make mistakes, Anthony. You're right. Precise decision-maker. When he gets the ball out of his hands, he gets it to the wide-open guys, takes what the defense gives you. Ball placement. Very accurate as a passer, and he just gets the balls in his weapons' hands across the field. He doesn't take a lot of risk like you talked about, hence the low interception that he has on the season. He started last year with a long streak as well, 139 straight. So Finley runs this offense, and we'll see how many shots they do take against a very stout Florida State defense. Hines the tailback, and Naheem Hines, who can also go out of the backfield and catch it a little bit, gets the first carry. Yeah, he was a big part of their game last year. Had 11 catches as a receiver, but he's one of the backs. You'll have to worry about number one, folks. Jalen Sandals will be all over the football field today, inside, outside, but he'll have to deal with the inside linebacker, Matthew Thomas, and Derwin James, the safety for Florida State, is a nightmare in third down packages. One of the top defensive players in the country, James. We'll talk about him throughout the day. After the gain of four, Finley on second and six. Goes over the middle and incomplete. So third down coming up on the incompletion to Harmon. Finley in this offense loves the easy throws, but they're going to have a tough time today. Florida State already playing a lot of press man on the outside. And those throws will be tight window throws. That's what Coach Dorn was talking about for North Carolina State. Will he be able to make those tight window throws in this football game? Third down, let's watch number three, Derwin James. He's down low, he's a strong safety, someone that needs to be accounted for. We'll watch him move around at the line of scrimmage all day today. And he is coming on third down. Finley to throw. And right across midfield, he's got C.J. Riley, the redshirt freshman for 12 and a first down. Yeah, and those inside routes, you see Derwin James come inside. Great job by Hines, the back, picking him up. But again, one-on-one -on -one matchups with backers, strong safeties. They feel like they have an advantage, possibly, in getting those throws open. Finley stands in the pocket, makes a nice throw. Junior tailback knows how to pick up that pressure from Florida State as NC State will go to the outside and Jalen Samuels he's been so versatile the ACC had to create an award for him with an all-purpose award because he catches it he runs it he does a lot well, look at the production and the, and the balance 19 rushing 17 reception touchdowns in his career again he is an effective player and he's going to earn his pay today because he's going to be located throughout this field inside outside the backfield they like to make him the moving piece for this offense. 
That's Samuels into the backfield on second and three. The opening drive for NC State and a short slant pass for Naheem Hines across the 35-yard line. So exactly what we talked about, those quick passes working for NC State. And Finley is so good at recognizing which wide receiver has a little bit of cushion. He'll find that guy and he'll get him the ball quick. That's got to be disconcerting for a defensive player, right, Rock, as a former linebacker? Yeah, I mean, when you, like, efficiency is so hard to deal with when you're a defensive player. When you got a guy, you got him covered up pretty good, but that quarterback finds a way to get the ball in that window that's tough so first down NC State and they will go on the ground Jalen Samuels gets hammered as a flag has come in it was Josh Sweat the highly recruited junior coming in to blow it up and that penalty is not going to help the Wolfpack it's a loss of six if it stands holding offense number 65 the penalty will be declined second down well, that's on the center Bradbury, but you see the pre-snap movements, a lot of different things going on before the ball snapped. They actually brought the right tackle and shifted him to the left on that last play, Jason. Again, trying to trick and move around this Florida State defense. You think maybe three weeks off, that's one of the toughest things for Florida State to handle today? There's no question. Finding, locating these star players, in particular, number one. Finley settles and throws, and that is a big hit at the 36-yard line. A short gain for NC State. Hoskins with the hit. Linebacking core is very fast. Alert Hoskins, nine tackles against Bama. Number six, Matthew Thomas, ten tackles. He barely took reps in the fall camp this year with some qualification issues. Got it in, and they put him in that game, and he was ready to go. So they got some athletes at the second level. Beautiful day in Tallahassee, third down and 13. Quick throw on the screen. Jalen Samuels upfield, inside the 20-yard line, and the 10 he goes. Samuels navigating through the defense. He gets 27. Samuels again moving all over the place. See him start from the right. He'll motion across, and they're going to run a bubble screen. Great blocks out front by the wide receivers. And look at all this running space before anybody comes near him. He needs to be accounted for, and that's the problem when you have that moving piece, Jason. He becomes an issue as far as matchups. It's a defense with very good speed, and Samuels carved him for the first and goal opportunity for NC State. They will run with Hines. And he's down to the six. You guys are talking about Samuels. The hardest thing about him is they line him up so many different places. So even if a defense wants to put a matchup, say put Derwin James on him, you don't know where he's going to line up. He's lined up wide. He lines up in the backfield. He lines up at the tight end spot. It's really hard to get a beat on a player like that. And you're right. Initially, if Derwin James is on it, now they can pull him away. Maybe a linebacker gets matched on him. Now you have a huge advantage in one-on-one -on -one routes in space. Guy who was dinged up some last year, Samuels, full strength now. Finley on second down and goal. Loads of time. Finley on the move toward the end zone and incomplete. DeMarcus Christmas provided the pressure, and it's third down. Now, the one thing when you get in the red zone against Florida State, because of their speed and the ability to cover, that, that's going to be tough for the quarterback to operate. A lot of garnet go, uh, jerseys throughout this football field that can react to the football, so Finley's going to have to be able to make those tight window throws close down in the red area. NC State at 2-1 and one has done a good job on that first possession of every game first time in over two decades but this is a different defense and the kicker situation is a little chancy right now for the Wolfpack that was the first incompletion in six consecutive for Finley and this one's into traffic and incomplete for Riley who had the big catch earlier so now fourth and goal for NC State well, Ma Matthew Thomas He's coming off the top of the right of your screen. He's going to force the early throw. And listen, there's a lot of bodies right here for Florida State in the middle. He's not even ready for it. Wide receivers thinking he's not going to get the ball because he sees two defenders in front of him. Quarterback trying to release it because of the quick pressure. Nice job by Florida State's defense. Dave Doran told us he feels good about his special teams right now, except for maybe the kicking game. And Carson Wise, who's just one for three this year, this one from 24 yards away for Wise. 
And it is good. So 8.09 in the first. Florida State gets stopped by NC State. The Wolfpack is on the board. 3-0. NC State, a 3-0 lead over Florida State. And talking to Dave Doran this week, this is his fifth season, but he's just happy to have some seniors around. This is the first time he's felt like he doesn't have to really coach a big glut of young guys. And he's seen the payoff with three straight bowl games. He feels like this might be his best team in Raleigh. Yeah, perfect storm for him. He finally gets those recruits to grow up, bring them in, groom them. I actually told him, how's it looking for the future? He says, listen, we got some young guys that are ready to play, but they're definitely learning from this senior crew. That kick bounces into the end zone, and it's a touchback. So we told you about the quarterback, James Blackman, and him being 18 years old. But why is he starting is the question. DeAndre Johnson kicked off the team. Francois, the patella tendon injury, and Blackman, the three-star recruit, first true freshman quarterback since 85 to start for FSU. Well, all the other players have to help him out. Now, last against game against Bama, Francois took a ton of hits. Coach Fisher told me he only saw three. I pulled five out for the folks to see because the protection has to be clean. They got to finish up front. If they don't do that, Blackman's going to be in some trouble today, so that'll be important. Pressure there, and he airmails this, so second down coming up as we check in the studio on Cassidy Hubbard. Hi, Cassidy. Mason, AT&T Field Pass, Texas A&M and Arkansas at AT&T Stadium, and Austin Allen to Jared Cornelius. Six yards for a touchdown on their opening drive. Razorbacks up 7-0 this game on ESPN. Jason, Anthony, back to you. Well, you mentioned the numbers, Anthony, with those three hits or five, however you want to put it. And you couldn't blame Jimbo Fisher for wanting to forget a couple of them. He loses his starting quarterback for the year. As Blackman goes to the sideline and misses again, he was looking for Auden Tate with Alston, and it's third down very quickly. Well, Auden Tate's a big target, but for me, these fade routes, these kind of passes down the field, don't help your quarterback get into a rhythm. I'd rather see slants, quick passes to the tight end. Just get them early completions like we saw on the Are first series. Third down and 10. For Blackman with Cam Akers, the freshman checking in at tailback, a dynamic player. And this one's incomplete as well, so with Nooney Murray, the intended target, we'll see how Blackman handles this adversity. Yeah, I mean, listen, you can expect to have a couple three and outs, try to get him in a type of a, a rhythm obviously early on we haven't seen that but again you got to make it easy for this young man it's going to take some time for he starts getting this game get into a groove and again nc state only rushes for there which i think is a great strategy you got a young quarterback hasn't seen a lot of looks drop seven in the coverage and make him read those tight windows logan tyler to boot it and that's a good kick. Hines with a fair catch inside the 25-yard line. It's a 51-yard punt, and they said the freshman can direct some traffic and be a leader. He's telling Murray, I wanted you over there. College football on ABC is presented by Walmart. Walmart, save money, live better. In part by AT&T and BMW, we only make one thing, the ultimate driving machine. A lot of smiles at the tailgates this morning, and in large part because Florida State, since joining the ACC, is 24-1 and in home openers. But this is an ACC game they had because of Hurricane Irma. The Miami game moved, and the one game that they may have really wanted to have, the Louisiana Monroe game, canceled completely with a freshman quarterback. That would have been a nice opportunity. Instead, they go right against NC State and trail 3-0. Again, those live reps, you cannot duplicate those in practice, unfortunately. They do a lot of ones-on-ones -on -ones in practice, but again, once you're out here in front of the crowd, Jason, that's when you'll be tested. We're seeing it early on, a little rusty. Samuels to back, and he will throw down the sideline and a jumping effort by Dylan Parham. Oh, my goodness, they uncorked some trickery. 
the double pass. Jalen Samuels can do everything, folks, and no one would think he'd throw the football in this game early on. He's getting involved all over the place. Nice pass, great concentration by Par Parham in that play. So he runs it, he catches it, now he throws it. And this is Hines on the carry into plus territory with Josh Sweat riding him down. How do you deal with this guy if you're Florida State defensively? Well, if you watch him when he gets the ball, then you want to react. All of a sudden, you want to come down the field, be a tackler. But now, they mix it up so much that when they throw a pass, now you start second-guessing yourself as a safety or a linebacker. So now there's hesitation. Rocky talked about that. Now the mismatches become in your favor. Right now, he's doing everything. Finley on second down, flushed out of the pocket. Finley decides to throw it into the ground. And here comes the flag. That ball never had a chance. That play never had a chance. Now, it looked like Samuels was in the vicinity. The pass was legal. There was a receiver in the area. The penalty is for a personal foul. Roughing the passer number 99 on the defense. Oh, wow. 15 yard penalty. First down. It's on Brian Burns, the sophomore out of Fort Lauderdale. Yeah, you saw Finley arguing, thinking, hey, there's there's a receiver right in front of me. I threw it to the back, and the ref's like, hold it. I got something going in your favor. Brian Burns, the young pass rush specialist for Florida State, hits the quarterback late. Bottom of the screen, he's actually dropping back in the pass. And he'll come up. Finley throws it back in. I don't know. That's doesn't look very violent. But again, from a protection standpoint, there's an emphasis on the quarterback. One thing Florida State certainly did well in week one was the penalty issue. Just four penalties, 30 yards. That one really stings and pushes the drive near the 30-yard line. Hines on first down and not much there. Second and long coming up. Guys, with 21 days off, eye discipline is the first thing to go for a defensive player if you're not used to getting those game speed kind of reps. That's why with NC State, you're seeing a lot of misdirection, a lot of guys coming across the field, testing that eye discipline of this Florida State defense. And how do you play fast, Rocky? Once you're trying to trust your eyes, now you're trying to trust an anticipation. Now you got backs throwing passes. It's very <laughs> exactly difficult right. for the defense. It makes you hesitate, and that's exactly what NC State wants. Second down for Finley. Wide open man over the middle is Harmon off the juggle. He is inside the 20 yard line. Burns with the tackle and it's first down NC State in the red zone again. It's a nice read by Finley getting it inside. They pulled with the backer, pull out with the running back. He was able to get it in the middle. Hines on first down is spun down at the 15-yard line. How about Eli Drinkwitz, the offensive coordinator for NC State, told us this week he's matured as a play caller. He used to fall in love with certain play calls. Now he's really personnel-based. And then he unleashes that in the first quarter against Florida State. You might see a couple more of those, Jason. He said he's got a bunch of trick plays in his pocket, but the red zone, he said, was key. One getting there and two finishing. They didn't finish the last series with just a field goal. Finley's got time running out on him. It's an option play for Hines to the outside. Hines to the five, and he's belted out of bounds by Derwin James. First and goal, NC State. He takes a big hit, but a lot of space. You got to give some kudos to these wide receivers. Those three guys on the outside making those blocks. You want to talk about space. Watch Hines. He gets the football, pitches it out. Look at everybody locked up. Freezer right there, right here. Blocking here. Excellent job by these receivers. Not only can they catch the ball and beat the verse, they get blocking up the field. Those are young receivers, too. A freshman and a sophomore as Hines is dropped by Derek Noddy. And second and goal coming up. We haven't even got to Nadi yet on the defensive line. Arguably one of the best D tackles in college football. He's definitely a top 20 pick, Jason. He's a, he's a guy to me that controls the middle and helps some of these linebackers for Florida State make big plays. Todd McShay has him as his number five defensive lineman right now. And he was not under-recruited, certainly, but in the bottom eighth of the ESPN 300 coming in. He's really improved.
Samuels in the backfield. Samuels the target, and that's incomplete. Third and goal. It's a nice job by Finley, even though it's an incompletion. Good touch on the outside, but you see that pre-snap movement on the field. And Anthony, with that pre-snap movement, you could see the defensive tackles, Christmas and Naughty. They did not move. They were actually standing on top of one another in the same gap. A great strategy again by NC State. And when you're on the three-yard line, you want those guys ready and grounded to come off the football. When you get them standing, big advantage for the offense. That's the distance for NC State. Third and goal. They will run up the middle, and now what is the choice after the Samuels run? Fourth and goal. You going? I'll tell you, you, you set the tempo up front, trust your offensive lineman. I think you should go for it here. You try to win this football game, Jason, you got to go and get touchdowns, not field goals. Fourth down and goal, NC State. Samuels on the run, looking for the end zone. Touchdown! Samuels scores! What an effort. Receiver, tight end, halfback, slung on the field. It's a touchdown. Passer, and now the tailback in the backfield. The question is now, was he able to get in? You see him dive. Ball's not crossed the line, but where is his body? Body looks like he's above the ground. Question is, is that left hand touching the ground? Remember, we need indisputable video evidence to overturn the call of touchdown. Is there enough evidence to overturn is the question. It's going to be tough. on the field was a touchdown. That's under review. Yeah, that angle's going to be tough to see it because of all the offensive linemen, so they won't be able to use that one. But that one we just saw, again, his body is parallel to the field nothing's touching now his left hand touches the ground but that's okay you're allowed to lean on the hand if his elbow or anything else is down that's going to stand jason i think he's got his hand on the ground the ball's crossing the plane his body is clearly these are great views here clearly above the level of the field not touching and the ball is crossing the white line you don't need the full football either it just exactly. needs to break that plane, and it looks like I'm with you. I think that's a touchdown. And if it stands, it's his 37th career, fourth most in school history, 20 running, 17 receiving. You could say he's a one-man wolf pack. Get him a water bottle, too. He's going to need a lot of water and Gatorade in this game. We've seen him in about 15 different spots, and this is only the second drive for North Carolina State. Rolling on the field was a touchdown. That play is confirmed. Confirmed, not even stands. Confirmed. So Samuels gets in cleanly, and Florida State is reeling early in Tallahassee. Now the pressure of a true freshman quarterback, right, Jason? You got a guy that you tried to get the wheels turning a little bit on the first two series. You haven't done that. Now you're down 10 points. What's Jimbo going to do? Carson Wise for the extra point. And Jalen Samuels is hungry, Anthony. Inside, outside, passer now running back. This kid can do it all. And he says, feed me the ball, coach. You're going to see a lot of him today. College football on ABC is presented by Walmart. Walmart. Save money, live better. In part by AT&T and BMW, we only make one thing, the ultimate driving machine. NC State with a 10-0 advantage on Florida State, although big leads have not been terribly safe in this series. Both teams have blown big leads in recent memory, but a good start for the Wolfpack on the road in the ACC opener.
Kick goes into the end zone and another touchback for Bambard. And James Blackman, who Jimbo Fisher said loves to be coached, has had that rush coming at him early. Well, listen, it hasn't been successful the first two series. Jimbo Fisher's got a lot of great plays on that sheet. He's one of the best callers in college football. But you still have to take a step back, Jason. Two freshman quarterback. Establish a run game. Two rushes minus three yards and one pass that he tried to throw in a fade. Let's try to get something going here to get this kid's confidence up. Help him up front with the running backs and give him some simple passes. That's the only way. But you better hurry up and do that because you're down 10 points. We saw those running backs in practice the other day. There's a lot of talent in this backfield for Florida State, including the freshman Akers, who's checked into the game. And this run busts down the sideline for a nice game for Cam Akers. Fernandez took him out of bounds, but there's the explosiveness. He's the most explosive back on their team. Great blocking up front. Look at that hole. He's the game changer. He's the guy that can come in and make those splash runs. He did it against Bama. 14-yard game for that young man. That's a good start for him touching the ball for the first time. You know, Herbie said it in the opener against Alabama that sometimes when you've got a big game to open the year, you go with your senior, junior leadership. Patrick was in. Maybe we see the breakout game for Akers today in the backfield in game number two for Florida State. On uh, some counter action. Akers to the fringe across midfield. There's the run game, Anthony. Again, stick with it. Make them tackle you. Make them stop you. When you got a guy like Three Acres, who you just talked about, maybe this is his game. If you're an offensive coordinator, it's all about the hot hand. Give it to the back that gives you the best chance. If that's Acres, he's making a, a good run right now for it of being the guy that can stay in this football game. Gain of 16 after a hit of 14. And now Amir Rasul gives Acres a breather. A deep running back core. This is the sophomore Rasul in and a short pass to the sideline and Nooney Murray second down coming up. That This is the drive that you thought they were going to have in the opening drive, right? Yeah, you're right. And that short pass, even though you only got a few yards, it's a completion, right? Get this kid to get in his his mode, feel comfortable while he's doing, get his ball out to the weapons on the field and let those guys make the big plays. A lot of studs, a lot of five-star guys on the football field for this offense. Jimbo Fisher has brought in about a half decade worth of top five recruiting classes. And a flag comes in, and that's not a great sign for a promising drive for the Seminoles. That's the second one on Kelly. He's got to relax a little bit. He's probably the starter. Offense, number 74. Five-yard penalty, second down. You see uh, Eberly, the center, coming over him, the senior, a junior leader. But Kelly's the guy that, that's the mauler. And look at these guys from a start standpoint. A lot of ups and downs in that Alabama game. Listen, I know they're playing Bama, and, and they're tough. But this North Carolina State defensive line is, is also very good. But it does start in the middle with Eberly with 21 starts. Blackman with a hit to the outside across the 40-yard line to Auden Tate. And there's a short pass that goes for extra yardage. Uh, again, th that's the thing. Get it in playmakers' hands. 6-5 Auden. He's got a great block. Watch number 89 come inside and get that safety going down. Number 24 Boone. That's all you need. You need space. These players can make plays, move the chains, and get first downs. This is an inexperienced NC State secondary. And Jimbo Fisher said, look, we want these guys to have to tackle our wide receivers. Third down and one for Akers. And he is met and dropped behind the line. That's Jarius Moorhead with the loss of two, fourth down. And here's the difference. Akers is a fast, quick twitch guy. You only need a yard, so know the circumstance. Don't dance at the line of scrimmage. Get downhill. If he just puts his shoulder down, he'll get the first down. That's the difference between him and a guy like Patrick, who's 6'3", 235 pounds. Jimbo Fisher is not terribly pleased. And he's going to yell at Akers, look, you need one yard. Get down the field. That's exactly what we're talking about. He's got to understand the situation. Situational football is what it's all about. And he's going to coach him up, and he's going to coach him hard. I like that. I like the fact that he gets these guys, regardless if they're freshmen, seniors, it doesn't matter. It's been 
five years since Florida State lost to NC State, but the Wolfpack has a 10-0 lead at the end of one. College football will continue after this message and a word from our ABC stations. A lovely day in Tallahassee is a little gloomy on the scoreboard. NC State 10 nothing over Florida State. Fourth and three. What are you doing? Well, they should go for it. They're trying to build confidence. North Carolina State already put the pressure on. They went for it. Keep an eye. They're spreading the defense out right now, trying to potentially maybe get a lane for their big back, Patrick. Fourth down, Seminoles. Blackman throws the drag route and has the first down to Nooney Murray. It was a short route. It got enough, and it moves the sticks and maybe the confidence as well. That's a nice job. Easy completion. That's a tough throw for the quarterback. Getting it out. It's got to be accurate. You're going to get it in the front of the receiver. Nice job blocking, getting, putting his shoulder down. And, hey, he likes it. He likes the first down. He lets, he'll take it. He needs some more snaps. It's a nice drive right now by Florida State. 18-year-old James Blackman in for the injured DeAndre Francois with that patella injury in the opener against Alabama. Akers back in and hits the hole. And second down coming up. Cassidy. Thanks, Jason. Jersey Mike's a performance above UNLV at Ohio State after a Buckeyes turnover. Lexington Thomas on the carry, and Draymond Jones tackles him in the end zone for a safety. Right now, the Buckeyes are up 16-0. Back to you guys. Cassidy, thank you. Ohio State rolling early on today. Big Big Ten game later on with Iowa and Penn State and Iowa City. Blackman on the roll, threw it behind Vickers, and it's third down, a little rush there. Yeah, he's got such a big arm. Again, that's a nice touch pass. You just want to kind of flick it out there to Vickers. He's so close to him. You think, oh, this is such an easy throw. How do you miss it? But again, this kid, he's got that looping, big turning uh, throw as, his, as the strength of his arm, and he knows it's on him on that one there. Again, these are the different types of passes he really hasn't made or done yet in live action, so he's learning on the move every drive. You can almost feel the adrenaline from up here and through your screen for this freshman. Ninth play of the drive. This is third down. Blackman to the sideline. Beautiful throw to Auden Tate on target. First and goal, Florida State, and he is jazzed. Yeah, he, he takes a hit. His helmet comes off. He may have to come out for a snap, but a great throw. Watch the pressure. North Carolina State trying to hit him hard like they, they did and talked about, and that's a perfectly thrown ball to the outside. Watch the pressure up front. Defensive lineman gets in, takes a hit. Wow, now that's another hit. Landed on top of him. Surprised they maybe didn't get a flag on that, but the helmet did come off. It's J.J. Cosentino, the redshirt junior out of the state of Pennsylvania, who gets one play. It'll be a handoff too, Jason, trust me. You're pretty sure of that. Jacquez Patrick seeking the five-yard line and down to the four in the arms of Bradley Chubb. Second and goal, and here comes Blackman. Well, you saw the hit package we showed before the game in the Bama game. That's something you don't want to get used to him taking in this football game, but it does show you a little bit about him standing in the pocket and delivering an accurate ball with that pass to Tate. What does that do for his confidence, you think? Oh, that, that's huge. I mean, to drop a dime like that on the outside, not a favorable throw for quarterbacks, that's a tough one. Dropping it to the outside in that face. That's the second one we've seen. Obvious a pass they feel good about. Patrick on the delay. He is taken down. His helmet comes off as well on the tackle from Chubb, who's been everywhere recently, and it's third down. Uh, it's going to be hard to run by Chubb. Bradley Chubb is, is a guy that controls the line of scrimmage. And people thought maybe this would be a face mask. I'm not quite sure. It's it's tough to see if he had the face mask, but the helmet does come off. But back to Chubb. He's our guy today. Lot, lot on tape. Run, pass. He's elusive. He's strong. He's got great effort. This is a timeout. Patrick's timeout. arguing Florida his State. helmet was pulled That's off timeout. and that he should be able to stay in the game because of that. But James Blackman, the freshman, 
just starting to build his Florida State resume. He's been excited, he's been sad, and now he's pretty pumped after a long pass on this drive. Third down and goal, Florida State. They'll go four wide. Try to find the best matchup over your wide receiver. A little pre-snap action here to try to get some information for Blackman. Tall receivers on the outside that can high point the ball. Exactly. Blackman over the middle. Touchdown, Florida State. Auden Tate with the score, his second of the year, and Blackman's on the board in his Florida State career. Yeah, Tate was a target for him in practice. He's going to run a slam route. He's going to put this ball behind the linebacker. That's a heck of a job dropping it over number three. Pratt, his head was kind of swiveling there, not knowing what was going on. And Blackman lays one easy for Tate to catch. Scouts call it arm talent. He's got a little bit of it. 12 play, 75 yard drive. Aguayo the extra point. Florida State cracks the score column. The freshman over the top to Tate. It's a three point game. College football on ABC, presented by Walmart, is brought to you by Buick, proud partner of the NCAA. Pacific Life, experience the power of Pacific. And Ikea, where the size of your wallet doesn't dictate the size of your dreams for the home. Seminoles lead this series 26 to 11. Jameis Winston, national champ. 1993 here in Tallahassee, 1999, and then 2013. But on Jameis Winston, Jimbo Fisher said, Jameis loved to be coached. We mentioned that about Blackman as well, and he is certainly getting a coaching on the sideline, but that last drive, Anthony, he was five for six. He's a kid that really wants the information. He wants to learn. He brings great quality questions to the coaching staff in practice, and he wants to work the craft. He's not treating this as if he's a true freshman. He's treating this as he's the guy that has to be able to handle the workload that all the other quarterbacks have. It's touchback from the 25 NC State. It's a battle of Big Ten unbeatens. Trace McSorley, Saquon Barkley, and fourth-ranked Penn State against the Iowa Hawkeyes. Saturday night football presented by Wells Fargo starts at 7.30 Eastern, 4.30 Pacific. Also streaming live on the ESPN app. What a great running back matchup. Saquon Barkley, Akram Wadley. The Barkley's the real deal. Everybody's saying he arguably is the best back. He is the best back in college football. Enjoy what you see tonight. And Wadley, he He's been playing the third, second, fourth guy the last couple of years, finally gets his chance, and he's making the most of it. It's going to be a showdown in Iowa in that night game. I think we're going to see more points than the 2004 game, which was 6-4. <laughs> yeah. Just a hunch tonight. Finley on the roll is incomplete, so second and ten coming up for the Wolfpack. Well, during that long offensive drive, defensive coordinator Charles Kelly just set the record for the most plays drawn on the grease board, uh, showing his defense all the different formations and shifts and motions and uh, trying to settle that defense down a little bit with what NC State is trying to do. And usually he just puts X's, but for one of those guys, he had to use a number one, and he's just moving that guy all around the back of the He, he did there. a lot of erasing and redrawing number one. You're correct. Right on the inside, folks. Number one, Samuels. He's been everywhere for this offense. He's completed a pass today in this game as Finley goes with the slant. He's got Lewis fighting through tackles and third down and short coming up. And Jalen Samuels is really the Swiss Army knife for this team. Really just in two drives. He's been in the slot, catching balls on the outside with motion. He'll move him around on the inside. He's taking the ball as a passer on the double pass, making a completion, and then you put him in the backfield. Scoring touchdowns at the tailback position. This kid's diverse. He's been impressive. Huge third down for this offense. Third down and two. Finley has to hurry it, and Florida State's Derwin James lights up Samuels. It's fourth down. 
You see that misdirection. Samuels comes across, and he's really the last option trying to trick the defense. But honestly, when you watch the tape, Jason, they run this play a lot. They've already run it one time in the game. Great job by this Florida State defense anticipating that play and having a guy covering him to make that tackle. Just a couple of years ago, NC State was up here 17 to 7. Florida State went on a massive run. That was in 2015. And that's a momentum shifter there on the three and out for the Florida State defense, don't you think? And, and, you're, and it's about eyes. Rocky talked about eyes. Well, it looks like now they're starting to dial in on where everybody is and getting more comfortable within the scheme of the defense. 33-yard punt, and here comes the freshman once again trying to build on a touchdown drive for Florida State. Taco Bell is a proud partner of the college football playoff. Be on the lookout for Taco Bell student sections and passionate fans like these at games all season long. It's been a while since Florida State played at home. They were in that neutral site game against Alabama in the opener and a couple games washed out due to the effects of Hurricane Irma. Florida State trying to construct another touchdown drive after Blackman got him in. Last time, Blackman loads up and zips it. Auden Tate again becoming a favorite target of the freshman down to the 49. First down, gain of 15. Now these guys work well in practice, and you see that arm strength getting them out of the pocket a bit and delivering that football. I mean, Auden Tate's really got to track that thing when it's coming at him at about 60 miles an hour. <laughs> see him settle down as a quarterback. That last series really proved to be a difference, and it really jump-started him and getting him confident. So happy to finally see Auden Tate using his body early last year. You could tell he's a receiver. 6'5", didn't quite know how to use that. Did, that. did right there. Akers speeds into the hole. Cam Akers, the freshman, after getting jawed at by Jimbo Fisher on the way out last time. It's second down. This kid was a number one running back in, in the country last year. Everybody wanted him. A lot of buzz around him, and he's going to be a special back, and he's going to get utilized. Again, situational things, the different types of uh, things that happen within a football game, he's still learning, but I'll tell you, just pure talent, he's going to be special. Ten carries, 30 yards of that Alabama loss. On the delay, Akers shimmies inside, and that is a nifty, agile run to make a yard out of it. Third down. That's Sean Boone, 24. He's standing there waiting for him, and he just makes a little cut, and all of a sudden, he's running right by Boone. So, you know, Jimbo Fisher's going to find plays on that play sheet to try to find ways to get him the football in this game. Well, that helps Blackman out, certainly. Yeah, when you have balance... It also keeps the defense off balance as well because they can't just load the box up. They can't guess. They can't assume. And if this offensive line can continue to get good push, it would be good for him in the passing game. Jacquez Patrick off the delay. He does have the first down to the 41-yard line. Moorhead, the safety came up to stop him, but Florida State's cooking now. It's a nice job getting that first down. Ryan Izzo. The tight end, number 81. He's a, a movable piece on this offense. Does a lot of the dirty work, blocking. He does a nice job wrapping around and kicking out that linebacker. I love the downhill nature of Patrick. We saw earlier Akers a little more east-west, but Patrick, that knife, that bowling ball coming right downhill for the first down. He was the number three running back out of high school. So, again, there's so much talent in this offensive backfield for Florida State as Akers is dumped after a yard. They have really four guys that might be able to start for a lot of other teams. Well, listen, you know, it's not hard to pull some of the best. You know, Bama has three, four deep at the running back position. Florida State is right there. They're going to get some of the top players, and they got to find ways to utilize them on the field. But the hot hand, to me, always wins out trying to find who that guy is week in and week out. A lot more running the past couple of drives for Florida State, as you called for. Blackman hit by Chubb, still delivers to Nooney, uh, Auden Tate, I should say. And it's going to be third down as Alston made the stop. 
Yeah, nice job on the route, but here's Chubb. Now, you got to count. Don't let these hits start accumulating at the position. He's a skinny guy. He's not going to be able to take those throughout the game. Chubb has one of the best inside moves I've seen of any defensive end in college football. Amazing. Technician of the game, does everything well, understands the techniques at the position. He'll be a highly coveted defensive end at the next level when, when that time comes. Those fans got into the glitter cabinet a little bit. <laughs> Third down and four, and this is going to be a timeout, you'd imagine, for Florida State. Only one remaining. Third down and four when we come back for Florida State. All right, time now for today's AFLAC trivia question. Eight of the 32 starting quarterbacks in the NFL last week were from the ACC. Which school had the most? You got it? I do. You want it? <laughs> Tweet it. <laughs> Let's let the fans work on it a little bit. Mill it. I might be able to name them, too. FSU, three for its last three on third down. Blackman here will run. Blackman off the spin, put his foot in the ground, and this ball is loose inside the five-yard line. Battle for it continues. Who's got it at the bottom of the pile? Wow. A lot going on here. Now the question is... Well, NC State has it. Chubb has come away with the pile with the ball, but what's the call going to be? And, and was Blackman down? You know, he's a big guy. It's a long arm holding that football. And the signal is NC State... Ball. Rolling on the field was a fumble. Subsequently recovered by North Carolina State. First down. But the tough thing for long arm quarterbacks is keeping that ball tucked. See how it's hanging out. Now watch. Is his knee or body down before it comes out? Looks like the ground initially may have forced that ball out. Now all this other stuff is fun. This is great stuff. These guys trying to get it. How much this game means to both of these teams. But I think the quarterback... And it's hard to tell when that ball comes out on that view there. Again, we got to have sufficient evidence, too. Yeah, we need indisputable video evidence to overturn this call that it's a fumble. Let's, let's rewind that view right there because it gets slapped out. Okay. Where's the knee, though? The right knee might have been down, Anthony. You're right. I see me. So this view here... Watch the right knee is down, and the ball's getting forced. That's, this is so close. But again, if you need indisputable video evidence to overturn, so close probably leads to stands, wouldn't you say? Maybe right. Now, can they simultaneously put this together between that and the other view? Ball's chopping down, so right there, the ball's... We see it out there. Now, where is his, his knee? It's almost simultaneous. This will be an interesting call. This is a very, very close one. How about Bradley Chubb forcing the fumble and recovering it well down the field? That's right. I mean, not only is he, you know, making this play and having the wherewithal, he's literally chasing Blackman, relentless player. Rocky talked about it. This kid is an all-day handful to deal with. And Anthony, that's one of the things the NFL scouts love about Chubb. You see so many guys, five-star talent, this and that, but do you play with a high motor? That's what they like about Chubb. I can't imagine this is going to be a quick decision, Jason. So they're, they're going to look at this thing because there's a couple angles they might have to put together and piece this thing. But again, you got to have the evidence and... Even when it's close, you got to be sure, right? That, that's the biggest thing you were saying. And you start with the call on the field. So you'd have to have the indisputable video evidence to overturn the call. And I just don't know that we reached that threshold with everything we saw. We'll check it out. After review, the ruling on the field stands. First down, North Carolina State. 
uh, you can make a strong argument that the knee was down, but with yeah. the call on the field, that's the key to the whole thing. Yeah, once they threw that beanbag, and I saw that referee toss it, that's the call. But here's one more final look, and again, this is slow-mo, too. So you see that? That's a great job by Chubb knocking that out. And then, you know, who's going to fall on it? This is a live ball now. Everybody diving around. You got attack lineman right on top of it, not getting it now. This defensive line needs to get some surge for Florida State, try to make a stop and force a punt on this drive. Be tough sledding here for North Carolina State to get out. That's Samuels in motion. And Gillespie on the run. He does not have the speed to get away. And let's see what the marker is as well. Maybe a face mask as Pugh came in for the tackle. Yeah, I think that's what's going to be. I saw the back's head twist. Special foul. Face mask. Defense number 16. 15 yards into the run. First down. Yeah, 16 is going to take on the block. Spin out and watch his left hand right clearly and pulling back on the face mask really easy call for the side judge to make and that's a huge penalty now Jason because now all of a sudden you go from the two you're out to the 15 a lot of breathing room for North Carolina State not exactly the birthday present Jacob Pugh wanted for his 22nd that he turned yesterday some room for Finley he lofts it to the sideline down the field incomplete he wanted Kelvin Harmon on the deep ball. Samuels, the freshman, was there with him. Yeah, Harmon's his guy. 6'3", 214 pounds. He tracks his ball, just can't pull it in. Very similar pass and catch earlier by Florida State with Blackman and Tate. Finley trying to do the same, just to click off. Usually they've made those uh, connections throughout the season right there. Just a click off. Remember, Samuels was the guy who was beaten by Ridley in the opening game for a long touchdown pass for Alabama without safety help. So on second and ten, they will throw a wide receiver screen that's going nowhere. Samuels giving ground and chased out of bounds. Roderick Hoskins was there along with a cavalcade in Garnet and Gold. Can't teach this skill set. Derwin James, number three, we talked about it earlier. He's seeing this before the ball's even coming out. Watch him track down the back, slow down Samuels. He knows he's a target, and here comes the Calvary. Excellent job by that young man. And that was a mismatch. They had the tight end, Cole Cook, trying to block Derwin James in that play. No offense, Anthony, but Derwin James cut right through that block and made a great play. He was, listen, he was moving before the tight end even had a shot. The anticipation skills of this player is unbelievable. Yeah, it's still a mismatch. Match though against the tight end, buddy. <laughs> For the second time, you are right. Third down at 16. And the play clock hits zero, so a flag comes in as the crowd swells in Tallahassee. Offense. Five yard penalty. Third down. You wouldn't expect that from a veteran quarterback like Finley. Very smart, intellectual kid. Coach Doran talked about his IQ is off the charts. Very serious player throughout the week. But again, that momentum now jumping on the side of Florida State with 30-21. Not a lot of plays here, Jason, in the playbook to call. You think run it? Run it or throw a quick pass to the outside. Hines out of the backfield. This is Hines in stride and incomplete. Dropped by the junior running back, so fourth down and not a lot of room to do it with. This kid has been a ball of energy. James Blackman over on the sideline, even when the defense is on the field. Well, these are all the things now that help a, a true freshman quarterback, right? The defense playing well, putting some pressure on North Carolina State. Your back starting to pick up momentum in the run game. Jimbo Fisher getting the play calling, feeling his quarterback out, and then you get the completions on top of it. That's what you want to get a young man going in this football game. A.J. Cole back to punt. Kalen LeBourne back to receive. And he'll have a shot. From midfield, LeBourne gives Florida State plum field position. And a scrum at the 35-yard line. Blackman in the offense, back at it with five and a half to go in the first half when we come back. 
All right, time now for the answer to today's AFLAC trivia question. We asked you, mm -hmm. which ACC school had the most starting quarterbacks in the NFL last week? Your answer? Yep. Not surprisingly, one of the teams in our game. Yeah, I'll tell you, it's amazing, right? All these guys starting on the same week. Lennon Wilson, who was here, obviously transferred to Wisconsin. And the Jacoby Brissett, who got traded to the Colts from the Patriots, got the start his first week there against the Cardinals and also almost pulled out a win. We told you about Ryan Finley's interception streak or interception less streak. The longest one in NC State history is one of those guys you saw, Russell Wilson, over 370 in a row without a pick. Aker is the tailback for Blackman, who throws a screen to the outside, and Nooney Murray turning on the Jets, and he gets crushed out of bounds at the 21-yard line by Arius Moore, but he gets 15 for his trouble. Fans watching this think this is an easy pass. Folks, to put the ball right in front of the receiver. Look at Nooney. His eyes are in front of him. The ball, he's able to continue with his stride. Great blocking on the outside of the receivers. This young man's getting confidence. Blackman's starting to feel the groove of this football game. Jimbo calling some nice plays right now. Akers up the middle, and not much there on Nooney Murray. We asked, you know, wh why Nooney instead of Nyquan? His name's Nyquan Murray. Uh, his grandmother gave him the nickname, and he says, I, I don't even know why they call me that, but my name is Nooney. <laughs> but, yeah, didn't want to talk about it much either, so it's a great nickname. I love it. He really had a breakout game in that Orange Bowl last year uh, against Michigan. Did you see intrepid reporter Rocky Boyman taking things in from... In the end zone, it's nice positioning, right. Rock. <laughs> Got a great view right here, right behind <laughs> the defense. Second down for Blackman. The dump off to the sideline, and Cam Akers, the freshman tailback, takes it out of bounds, third down and short. Really impressed with Blackman right now, just taking what the defense gives him. And I think that was one thing Jimbo Fisher was concerned about, is does he gonna try to do too much? I think maybe he was those first couple drives, now just taking those easy throws when they're there. Yeah, you know what he said? He said he's his biggest concern for Blackman was trying to be too perfect. The kid's a perfectionist. He wants to do it right every time. And like you said, Rocky, just going out there and take what the defense gives you. He opened one for four for four yards. He's now nine out of 10 for nearly 100. Akers stays in on the toss behind Vickers, and he tries to reach for it and cannot get there. So now, fourth down, you kick it? Well, I'll tell you, I, listen, that's, I would kick it, but that's a great individual effort right there by the linebacker, number 58 Moore. Just came out like a missile to stop the back. Watch this again. Bam, that's a collision right there. That's finding the whole great instincts. More one of those guys that's got 30 plus starts as a linebacker. We talked about the eight seniors, six of these players with over 178 starts. It is Ricky Aguayo who had his 37 yarder blocked in the opener against Alabama. Aguayo is no good from 30. Wow. Well, we were watching it practice on Thursday. He wasn't terribly accurate, and Aguayo swings it wide. It's amazing. You know, when you get into this range, you, you feel got to feel good about putting your kicker out here. You're at home, and again, doesn't swing through and get his leg completely around to pull that ball to the left. And Jimbo's not a happy camper. Uh, you feel everything pushing Florida State's direction, right? Blackman's building, and now the field goal is no good. Well, it's been pretty stale right now for this North Carolina State offense. They got to figure out a way with three minutes left to put something together and get some of this momentum back. Finley to throw another short set, and this one goes to Jacoby Myers. And today on ESPN, two of the biggest games of the weekend, 3.30 Eastern in the Big 12, TCU and Mason Rudolph at Oklahoma State, the opponents in that one. Then number 17, Mississippi State, number 11, Georgia in the SEC, both games streaming live on the ESPN app. 
Jalen Samuels tiptoes outside. The clock will run, and he looks like he got across the 30-yard line for the first down. It's amazing how much he does in a football game. You know, you watch the film every single game since he's been here. They put him in so many spots. His conditioning level is premium. A guy that stays on the field for the majority of the plays, they'll give him a breather here. But again, they utilize him in so many ways. We, we pointed that out earlier, but a kid that really makes some big plays for his football team. He's getting a rare hydration break right now. Dequayne Nichols has come in to play tailback for NC State. And Nichols gets absolutely driven down by the sophomore Jalen Wilkerson, second and long. Yeah, Wilkerson's going to get a little play. Christmas actually came out of the game earlier on, so he's going to have some, some opportunities. But again, one thing we talked about with the offensive coordinator, Eli Drinkwitz, was he didn't want to get behind the chains on first down. A minus play to start. Let's see if they can finish this off Florida State's defense and get the, get the ball back. Finley fakes the toss, goes over the middle, and Jacoby Myers into space. Myers could go! Touchdown, NC State with a somersault! That will draw a flag. The touchdown will stand from 71 yards out. Let's watch Derwin James, an aggressive player. We saw him earlier, right? Jumping that quick bubble screen. Well, he sees that action. And wow, on the back end, not able to break down and make that tackle. So Jacoby Myers, the former quarterback, goes 71 yards for the touchdown after the missed field goal. And again, Florida State sees a late swing in a half this season. Wise for the extra point. It's a 10-point game. What happened, Anthony? Well, a lot of a lot of things with eyes, right? Jacoby's out here, okay? And he's going to see this action. That's going to pull up the defender. Now watch this. As he takes that step up, he's able to slip the ball with a great pass. Now you'd think Derwin James in space. He's one of their more accountable guys as far as making that tackle. Give credit to number 11, Myers, on that play. Of course, you can't do this in college. Got the play, but that's a heck of a stick on the landing. I was going to say, he it draws a flag, but you should get a discount if you stick the landing. Uh, you talked about eye discipline. That's something Rocky mentioned earlier. Yeah, guys. Yeah, guys. Eye discipline on that particular play. It looked like they had settled down pretty much, but then what a great head fake, a great pump by Finley, the quarterback. Really got that aggressive defense to bite. Receiver came right behind. Beautiful execution. And they bit, but it was small. The window wasn't big to make that pass. Finley had to really get that in. That's been the difference on the defenses he played early in the season. A little more off coverage zone. When you're playing Florida State, you've got to be accurate. Pinpoint that football into the receiver's hands. It's a nice job by both players on the throw and the catch. Can Florida State make something of the penalty? Should be good field position for the Knowles. Keith Gavin on the return. Gavin darts inside. He's across the 40-yard line. As we take a look at the college football rankings, brought to you by Northwestern Mutual with a look at the AP poll. Alabama still number one, playing against Vanderbilt. And Penn State, Iowa is the one to circle tonight. Yeah, Penn State, Iowa, huge game. A lot of, lot of uh, good backs in that football game. We talked about uh, Barkley and Wadley. But again, I think Trace McSorley and B me and Rocky both really like this kid. He is dangerous. In that read option, he is so dangerous. You've got to really test yourself when you're that unblocked defender for Iowa. Buck 29 for Blackman, the freshman. Looking Gavin's way this time. He's been a rare target so far, and he gets his hands under this one. I tell you what, guys, down here on this field, that big play by NC State just took all the juice out of this crowd. No emotion, all the energy gone. They've got to find a way to get this energy back in this stadium. Well, for, for the team, that, that, that doesn't do anything for them except the fact they got to continue to play. And Blackman now gets an opportunity in this two-minute chance to be a little aggressive. He's been good on it throughout the week in practice going against the ones. We'll check the marker off that incompletion.
watch the tuba section <laughs> on this incompletion. <laughs> Look out, Sousa phone. Watch out. Yeah, you're right. That's who me. What what where what happened? This, so, this guy right here, let's pause. He's waving to his mom right there in the crowd, and the ball comes right over him. That's uh so that's good stuff. We've heard the band is on the field. That's the football is on the band. <laughs> got a big arm we talked about but <laughs> Florida State with the penalty as this one goes to the outside and George Campbell that is a nice ball from Blackman inside plus territory not always a nice ball he bobbled it from the center still able to throw it all the way across the field it's a heck of a job of concentration by Blackman But again, it's his favorite receiver today, Auden Tate, on that first down catch. A lot, of, a lot of things to watch here now as you're moving down the field. Again, you have one timeout, less than a minute to go. Getting up to the line of scrimmage when you get those first downs, potentially spiking all those things you want to see this young quarterback do to help get this team potentially in the end zone for sure in field goal range. Well, the question is, what is field goal range yeah. for Aguayo after the miss from 30? Absolutely. Patrick in at tailback. They do have a timeout. And Patrick on the gas pedal inside the 25-yard line. First down. And the clock will stop here. They do have 48 seconds. They're going to try to get this play in quickly. And every second is valuable, especially like you said. Not a lot of confidence in the kicker. You want to get going. Again, fans looking at the casual movement of the offense. Blackman to throw. Loads of time this time. The freshman unloads it for the end zone. An incomplete for Nooney Murray. That breaks a string of nine in a row complete for Blackman. And, and again, it's a timing thing, right? When you're throwing that corner route, you got to have the ball in the air prior to him coming out of his break. Just hangs it up. Watch where the ball comes out of the hands of the quarterback. It's still in the hands, and he's already making his break. Runs out of really real estate to get that ball in there. Toughest thing for a young quarterback to do. Is I'd that, you think? There's no question because you don't get those kind of reps live full speed. You, you get them in practice, but again, all the things going on with the defense and the opposing team, it's tough to really get through versus your defense. Flag comes in before the snap. Snap infraction. Offense, number 54, five-yard penalty, second down. That's against Eberly who's making his 21st career start in a row. Uh, that's trust, though, too, isn't it, on the wide receiver and quarterback that you're yeah. talking about? Trust and reps. You only get trust with reps. Sideline route again on second down and long to Tate one more time, so he's racking up the catches. That's number seven. So you, now you have a third and five. Don't get greedy here. Take what the defense gives you. You don't have to force anything. You're already in field goal range. Even though your kicker just missed one, you don't want to make sure you move, leave this thing with no points at all. He looks that way again for Auden Tate. That's a first down. The clock will stop. To me, you want to get up and spike this. He's already got the plan. And there it is. It's a nice job. And you'd think you just expect that. I'll tell you, I watch a lot of college games. They just try to go run another play and let a couple valuable seconds come off. The spike is such a key element of this drive. Well, and you're not organized either. I mean, right. you're less likely to have a successful play. Exactly. Well, Auden Tate, who had just two catches in that Alabama game. One went for the lone touchdown. Now has his eighth catch officially, eight for 87. Yeah, he's been all over him, 10 targets today. Now, the one thing I'll say, as great as that is, okay, you gotta watch, watch the play clock. They're trying to get it reset. It's count, uh, they just reset it, so they got the time back. But as much as you go to Tate, be careful now. Don't fall asleep and start looking at him every time. They might bait you into a play, so distribution to other players is going to be key. Watching Blackman's eyes on that last play, that was only Tate. Yep. So this is second down after the spike. And Blackman to throw. Chubbs after him, and he goes down. 
They'll have to use the timeout, and Dave Doran said there are going to be times on Saturday where if we're doing it right, Blackman's going to get a hit in the back. There it was. Chubb has to be accounted for, and sometimes just one-on-one -on -one with the tackle is not enough. You really put a lot of stress, and Blackman's in the pocket. Now, sometimes you tell quarterbacks to step up. Looked like he had some room there. He tries to go to the side, and Chubb's right there to make the play. He's such a passionate player. Look at him on the sidelines. So far this game, I have not seen Florida State use a running back or a tight end to chip Chubb after a nice couple plays here in this drive. They may want to start thinking about that. Yeah, we talked about that. But Blackman, so far, in my opinion, has really come on in the, in the, in the back end series, and he's really found a great relationship with Auden Tate. He's been the lock-in key guy, dropped a beautiful dime pass on the outside fade, then finds him on the slant pass. Let's get it over. Now, here's the thing. Long arms. you got to tuck that football. This was a huge play. Chubb chases him down, knocks it out. Ended up really taking an opportunity away, and then they get into the field goal opportunity and miss it. Now, here goes Aguayo again. 12 seconds left. They're going to go ahead and kick it here. Does that surprise you at all? Timeout, timeout. NC State. North Carolina State. First timeout. Uh, it is third down. Timeout. They could take one shot to the end zone. Allstate is proud to be part of the team that comes together to do good by contributing to participating universities general scholarship funds for each field goal and extra point kick. To date, Allstate has contributed millions in scholarship funds. The reason why, and you make a great point, Jason, third down, you got an extra play, why don't you try? Well, listen, you just took a huge sack. You're pushed back now to the 20-yard line. Do you really want your young quarterback to try to force a ball in when a defense probably is going to drop back in some kind of a zone and potentially read the eyes for him to make a mistake? I think this is the good call. The thing is now, Aguayo's got to make this kick. This one's from the middle of the field. It's from 37 after the miss from 30. Timeout, NC State. Ice them. Ice them down, Jason. Get, those, get that bag of ice. Lay right on the back of the, uh, get yourself a drink if you're a coach. You know, this is your time. Take these 12 seconds and make them an eternity for this kicker. Love the super casual drink of water by Dave Doran. Monday Night Football, Dak Prescott and the Cowboys into the desert to face Carson Palmer and the Cardinals. Six Eastern on ESPN coverage starts. Monday Night Countdown served by Applebee's. Cowboys Cardinals, 8-15. Game is also available on ESPN2 in Spanish. He may want another drink and take another timeout. You never know. He's, he's got one left. Why not? Can't take him with you, right? And he doesn't want to go into halftime. He's having so much fun on the field right now. 17-7, Dave Doran will take it in his fifth season. Yeah, there it is. Cue, camera cue. Cue up the water. <laughs> North Carolina State called it third and final timeout prior to the snap. Timeout. 30 second timeout. So look, sometimes you just have to take a drink of water, right? Sometimes it's casual enough that uh, you're up 17-7 on Florida State. You feel pretty good about yourself. Yeah, listen, he's got to utilize them. Why go into halftime with some timeouts? But listen, the kicker just missed one, so put a little pressure on him, you know? Make him think about it. It's a mental game for kickers sometimes, and uh, why not get a drink while doing it? I mean, it's a hot day here in Tallahassee. NC State trying to win in this series for the first time in five years. And they've played very well. Jalen Samuels strong early. Finley again has not made any mistakes. This time, Aguayo will have to kick it. No timeouts left for NC State or Florida State. From 37, it is good. It's a one-score game with five seconds to go in the second. Well, the way Florida State's defense had played up to that point when they gave up the big play really changed the complexion of the back end of this second quarter. And for Florida State to come out and get a field goal now and take at least some of those points from the touchdown they gave up, but right through the middle, Coach Doran obviously trying to challenge the kicker mentally with all those timeouts. He's not going to go in there. I actually, I like that. He's not going to go in with ones in his back pocket, takes it, and uh, again, he still makes it. And that's something from, from the standpoint of Florida State, got to get your kicker confident too. 
Thousands affected by recent disasters, we remind you, urgently need support. Help the American Red Cross provide meals and shelter to these families. Donate today by going to redcross.org slash ESPN. It's part of the country affected greatly by the two hurricanes making landfall in the United States, Harvey and Irma, and whatever you can do to help everyone here appreciates. It's a touchback, and you would imagine NC State will take a knee and take the lead into halftime. Pretty impressive first half for the Wolfpack, wouldn't you say? It really was. Uh, you know, even though Justin Blackman was able to get some momentum, they were still able to get a big turnover, get the ball back for their offense. And again, it, it's going to take a team effort for these guys. They're going to have to keep plugging away. Like you said last year, they had the lead throughout that game. Florida State kept creeping back. They got to continue to roll it on them. Meantime, Ryan Finley again, no interception. So that makes now 19 plus 192. That's 211 consecutive attempts without an interception for Ryan Finley, who takes a knee. And we will go to halftime from Tallahassee. James Blackman, the freshman quarterback on a Glade Central High School. He's 18 years old. Graduation was May 23rd. He was not an early enrollee. And he's had one half under his belt now. We'll see how Florida State comes out of the locker room in the ACC opener. This after the loss to Alabama in the first game and then the two games that were either changed or canceled as we check in with Rocky and Jimbo Fisher. Coach, you get the field goal right there before half. Are you pleased with the performance of Justin Blackman in your offense the first James, half? James has done very well. We moved the ball. We had one turnover, but it was on a great play. He's playing aggressive, made a third down, converting on third down. I thought he's played a heck of a half. Took us on a two-minute drive, puts it back to one possession game, got the momentum back. I think he's doing a heck of a job. Now, offensively, NC State used a lot of shifts and motions and things like that. What can you do to settle down well, your we defense? Did. We did the whole second half and then give up an eye violation on a little pitch and uh, after the first two drives we've been good we just got to keep our eyes in place thanks coach rocky thank you we'll get you back to the studio after this message and a word from our abc station welcome to the state farm halftime report Ryan Finley to Jacoby Myers, 71 yards at Doak and Tally. And right now, NC State up 17 to 10 over Florida State. Welcome to the studio, Kevin Nagandi here, as well as Mac Brown and Booger McFarlane. And all the talk would be on the, the true freshman, James Blackman, getting his first start as Florida State playing for the first time in three weeks, of course, dealing with Hurricane Irma. And, and Booger, when you watch that first half, we start with the quarterback, but that's not the reason why you think Florida State is down. No, that's not the issue. The problem has been the Florida State defense. We've held them all year long as being one of the better defenses in the country, and they have, but they're missing tackles. And I almost thought Phillip Rivers showed up. Ryan Finley looks like the <laughs> second coming because the Florida State defense isn't tackling. They aren't filling their gaps. And for some reason, they just seem flat on the defensive side of the football. A huge field goal at the end of the half. Yeah. It gives them momentum going in. NC State gets the ball to start the second half. You don't want to get a freshman yeah. quarterback far behind. Well, Keep it close. What's your message if you're Jimbo to that freshman quarterback here handling that first half and getting ready and down by seven coming out? My message is we're fine. Yes. Play better yes. on defense. Yes. Step up and help your young quarterback. Yes. All right. What are you guys doing? He's Don't right. put it on him. Yes. I, like, guys, I, get, make a I said I'm talking about that. Make a play. That's the defensive <laughs> guy. Get on him. <laughs> Half complete from Doak Campbell Stadium in Tallahassee, and the home team's trailing 17 to 10. North Carolina State, which lost in the opener against South Carolina, with a seven-point advantage at the start of the third quarter. Jason Benetti, Anthony Beck, Rocky Boyman, our entire crew, and NC State will have the ball after deferring in the first half, and an impressive showing for Dave Doran's team in the first 30 minutes. I expected a close game. There's no question, Jason, and this is what we've got. Turnover's really been the difference in this football game that was provided by North Carolina State, so they're keeping it close, putting the pressure on this uh, freshman quarterback. Hines from a yard deep in the end zone. 
Naheem Hines thought he saw a crease, and he's just to the 21 as we take a look at our Pacific Life game summary with Florida State trailing by seven. Well, James Blackman started one for four in this game, and he's been 14 for 16, finding targets, making plays, beautiful ball placement in his passes, but they got to find ways to block Chubb. One-on-one's not going to get it done today. He's been all over the field. He's been starting to take its toll on the left tackle and Kelly, and then, of course, what are they doing on offense with Finley's dishing and distributing the ball? They got a big play right there at the end of the half by Jacoby Meyer to get a touchdown and really has been the difference in this football game. First down for NC State, opening drive, second half. And Naheem Hines on the run, and not much there against a stout run defense in Florida State. Guys, first half really impressed with the interior blocking and interior pass protection by NC State. They got some big old great athletes on Florida State's defense. And Finley likes to be up, set up close in that pocket. So a great job of keeping him clean. Yeah, 50 Adams, the right guard, 70 Prescott. You just saw him. Those guys have been really containing and helped Finley keep in that pocket clean. NC State only allowed 17 sacks all of last year as Finley turns quickly towards Samuel's side and Jalen Samuels can't get upfield. So a chance for a three and out for the Florida State defense. And two defensive linemen in on that tackle. It's amazing the speed and quickness with either number nine, uh, Josh Sweat, a premier pass rusher, and also Nandi. These guys get to the football. Even on the quick passing game, they're always in attacking whoever has the ball. Nadi, who Charles Kelly says has gotten so much smarter, even with a great foundation when he first got to Florida State. Third down and nine. Finley dropped. Fourth down as C.J. Riley couldn't haul it in with James near him. Well, I know Derwin James wasn't happy about getting that shake move on that touchdown early before the half. But he's going to drop out. He's a guy that comes on blitz. Now he's in coverage. Once he's locked on the defender, he tracks it, stays close, and knocks that football down. That's well played by him. Again, just a diverse player. Rocky's talked about it. We said early in the open, lining him up everywhere, asking him to do multiple things. A.J. Cole, the punt. And Florida State nearly got there. LeBourne on the return, and he goes down at the 37-yard line. James Blackman, true freshman quarterback, starting for Jimbo Fisher. Last time Jimbo did that with a true freshman, it was Gabe Gross at Auburn, our colleague, with a message about that moment. But the thing that sticks out most to me about that game is not actually the game, but the week of preparation before that. Jimbo Fisher put so much pressure on me in that week leading up to the game. By the time I got to the game, I didn't feel the pressure. He had come in that week and questioned everything I did, every decision I made, every throw I made. He questioned me to see if I was thinking the right thing, understanding what the defense was doing and why I had to go a certain direction. And that's what we saw in practice on Thursday. Jimbo Fisher really coaching hard on Blackman. Yeah, we watched. They had a blitz period against their defense, the scout defense. And the very first play, he misread where the safety was, threw the ball in the wrong spot. And immediately, Jimbo Fisher jumped on him. 1331, please. 1331. Immediate, immediately jumped on him and put the pressure on him and the next time made the right play. So again, you talked about it. He has been a, a coach that demands a lot from his players, but his players respond. Blackman's one of those players. Blackman to throw, and that is called an incomplete pass. It was very close as Murray couldn't hang on. Second down, and Jimbo Fisher was uh, exuberant about Gabe Gross. He said, look, he could have played quarterback. He went to go play baseball, but uh, he thought he had a quarterback on his hands. He said he made the right move. That's what he said. Well, <laughs> going to baseball. <laughs> that's right. That was the end result, but exactly. he did feel no, like there right. was some exactly. quarterback in there. There's no doubt about it. Gabe might be watching now. We got to be a little <laughs> nicer to our colleague on the college baseball side. Second down for the Seminoles, and here comes pressure. Blackman sets and fires. Middle of the field. Brought in. Auden Tate inside the red zone. He beat McLeod. Wow. 50-yard gain for Tate. He is down in a 
flag is in as well. The and it's roughing the passer. The penalty will be added to the end of the run. First down. I think Tate fell on the ball, maybe knocked the wind out of himself. But I'll tell you what now. Double A gap blitz. Perfectly picked up by the offensive line, which is the key. And look at his throw, folks. Drops a dime. DB right on the back of the linebacker. See the double-A ga gap blitz? See the protection? It's a good play call. Here comes Chubb now. Chubb's a smart guy. He cannot hit the quarterback. Tries to rake him a little bit with his arm. That's a technique that these D linemen like to use. But again, gets that flag, and Blackman says, hey, do whatever you want. I'm going to bounce right up. This kid's excited. And I'll tell you, that's a heck of a throw to start the second half. But Auden Tate is coming off with his nine catches for 137 yards and a touchdown. It looks like he has a... Uh, he's holding his wrist right now, so I, I'm not sure. Can't tell if that's a, a brace or a wrap he's got on there already coming into this game, but the heck of a job by him. Blackman to throw, quick pass, Keith Gavin is dropped by Moorhead, second down and goal. And Tate, we, you know, last time they got down the red zone, he was the target, right? And we talked about it. He's, I think that was his 11th targeted play in this game after that catch. Who does he go to now? Who are those other guys that step in that he can find? A lot of slant work, slant routes, quick hitters they ran in practice to their outside receivers. Uh, in the red zone. They got to look up top here. They will run with Akers, and it's third down and goal. Chubb was in very quickly again. He is nonstop, isn't he? He's in on a lot of plays, and it's not just around the quarterback or the backfield. He's chasing down plays. But again, you got to block him too, right? It's easy to come off and make tackles when nobody's blocking you, but he's a guy that has to be accounted for every single snap. Dave Doran said, really nice kid off the field. Not the nicest guy on the field. Yeah, he used some explicit terms to say what kind of a guy yeah. he is on the field, and that's what you love about him. He's going to shake your hand like a gentleman. He's going to come on the field and wreak havoc. Third down and goal. Blackman decides to run into white jerseys. Blackman is down in the arms of Fernandez and Hill. Fourth down and some post-play activity. Yeah. A, and here's Tate coming off the, the field. After the play was over, personal foul, number 69 on the offense for a late hit. 15-yard penalty. The down counts. Fourth down. Uh, you know, sometimes the offensive linemen, and there's Tate. This is huge loss for them. You lose your stud quarterback, Francois, in game one. Now your 6'5 target who's had a fantastic, really a breakout game for the season for him. We'll see 69 on the right side. He's seen his quarterback with a lot of guys. They're 69, and that's this is natural. Lyman want to go and try to knock guys away from their, their quarterback. But again, after the play, the quarterback's down. It's really late, and nobody else is moving except you. It's an easy target for the referees. So it's Aguayo going from 37 again. His first one was no good. The second one was through, and Aguayo this time pins it to make it 17-13 but Auden Tate is coming off the pass game damaged again for the Knowles down four tonight after UCLA and Stanford on ESPN stick around at Sports Center at night Stan Barrett and Linda Cohn from LA best from college football a lot of great games today Major League Baseball's playoff races tour championships some NFL news Sports Center at night streaming live on the ESPN app as well Penalty hurts Florida State's opportunity to go for it. Field goal good, 17-13 in the ACC opener. Hines driven back for a touchback. Kick off your week three NFL Sunday on ESPN at a new time with a new team. Rex Ryan, Charles Woodson, Matt Hasselbeck, Randy Moss, Mark Shefty, and new host Samantha Ponder. Sunday NFL Countdown presented by Snickers. Sunday at 10 a.m. Eastern, also streaming live on the ESPN app. Earlier we showed you the quarterbacks that NC State has provided for the NFL and a lot of defensive players for Florida State that we will see on Sundays very soon. Yeah, Derwin James and McFadden, these guys are top 10 picks in my eyes. 
Uh, Nadi is a guy to me, top 20, 25. And listen, Josh Sweat, Matthew Thomas, these guys are going to be in the mix too. Thomas being a senior who isn't in the game right now. And then also uh, Sweat as a potential first round guy when he makes that decision. 22, Adonis Thomas is in at linebacker with the injury to Thomas. As this goes to the outside, the flag comes in. Looked like Lewis held, blocking for Samuels. Holding. Offense number 12. Ten-yard penalty. First down. Rocky. And guys got an injury update. Matthew Thomas, the versatile playmaking linebacker of Florida State, has a back injury. He will not return the second half here. Adonis Thomas, registered sophomore, is in his place. No statistics on the season, so not a lot of playing time for Adonis Thomas. That's a, that's a big uh, guy to lose. Yeah, Matthews, Matthew Thomas, 10 tackles in game one. Really a key component on what they're trying to do in a rush and a coverage standpoint. Such a natural pass rusher, Thomas, off the field. This is first and 18. Naheem Hines is stacked up and dropped before the 20-yard line, second and long on the way. They've done a nice job containing uh, Hines today, just under 25 yards coming into that carry. And to me, he's been a forceful back, an explosive guy. When he, does, when he gets in space, he can be dangerous right now, not able to get past the second level of his defense. Great speed. He's a track All-American, but there have been no running lanes for him so far today. Finley on second and long, zips it over the middle for Myers, who had the earlier touchdown, and that's a short game. Third and about 10 on the way. It was Roderick Hoskins with the tackle. And here comes five new Florida State players on defense. They'll get that nickel package in there. They'll bring Nott Nottie back in and try to force this third down throw here, keep it within 10 yards. Derwin James playing the middle. No Matthew Thomas. There he is right there. Will they bring him? Will they drop him? That's what Finley will have to dissect. Third down and nine. Finley, little pump and go, and he's got his man. Myers again, short of midfield. It's a first down for NC State. What a throw. I'll tell you, that, that was a heat-seeking missile. The safety was coming in. There's some space that he gets between the DB on the outside. Roll it out here. They fake the slip screen, and look at this tight window. Bam! The safety's on it. He sees it. Not a lot of room for Finley to work. It's an excellent job. First down, Wolfpack. Hines trying to shimmy through the line, and he got lit up after a short game. That was Thomas, the replacement linebacker. Trey Marshall there, so second down coming up. Put all that work in to get to that third and long, and all of a sudden, bam, they get that pass in. They make that big adjustment, bringing multiple different players in for that third down. Now, NC State trying to get some momentum here crossing midfield. Methodical drive for the Wolfpack. Waiting some time off the clock. Samuels on the run, and he kept his feet long enough to get close to the marker. Hoskins the tackle, and it looks as though that's going to be a first down. So impressed by that young man, what he's able to do. Think about a playbook and just learning your plays at one position, let alone trying to be everywhere on five or six positions like he plays. How hard is that, though? I mean, for people who don't know. Well, think about it. If you're a receiver, you got to understand depths and details of routes and coverages. As a back, rolling on the field was a first down. The play is under review. We're going to look at the placement here, but think about it. As a back, you got to understand, too, how... To, how the offensive lineman flows, how the things move. But again, this is going to be a close call coming down. Able to get through. Looks like he passes it. We'll come back and see. College football on ABC, presented by Walmart, is brought to you by Audi.
Coca-Cola Zero Sugar. Real Coca-Cola taste, zero sugar, zero calories. And Allstate, official protector of college football fans. Somebody's got to put all those stickers on the helmets. It was Andrew Hoyle, including that sticker for the state of Florida to remember the, uh, those affected in the state by the hurricane. And here's a look at the play. It's going to be short. Samuels. Yeah, left, left elbow down, ball clearly behind the line. Now third and one. See if these offensive linemen can grind it out against Florida State's Devon. Gillespie at a tailback. Finley puts it on the ground and throws a tip ball that is wow. intercepted. Derwin James. A flag is in. We'll check the marker. Will it stand? Well, a lot of contact with the receiver the quarterback was throwing to, and that might have been one of the greatest effort catches by a defensive back I've seen. <laughs> My goodness. Get some clarity before he. They want to say, you know, was he within five yards, number one? Before the ball was touched by the defense, pass interference, defense number three. Wow. Apparently it was a first down and spotted the foul. Yeah. And I think you'll see the contact. He's actually covering the tight end right here. I believe, no, is that him? They called it on the wrong number. That's what they did. Probably on McFadden on the receiver on the, on the contact. Yeah, Cook was being hit before the ball was thrown. And so it's a first down, NC State. Golaspi, the running back, straight ahead. And he's driven back. The flag has come in one more time on the sideline. And it looks like maybe an offside penalty coming against the Seminoles. Offside, defense, number 18, five-yard penalty, first down. They get Hoskins, and again, Florida State really was virtually unpenalized in the opener, four for 30 yards. That has changed today. Well, these are big ones, too, because they're getting big chunks of yardage. North Carolina State is because of this, these mishaps early in this game. Nine penalties, 73 yards for the Seminoles this afternoon. Gillespie on first and five. Hits the hole hard. Gillespie inside the 10. First and goal, NC State. Trey Marshall took him out of bounds. The Wolfpack capitalizing on the penalties. Great job on the right side of the offensive line. Look at this hole. 70, the number 50. Adams doing a nice job getting to the second level. Gillespie's that dirty yard guy. He gets those dirty yards within the line of scrimmage. The tough ones, he's able to break free with a big play. That was 30 dirty yards for Gillespie, who crumples down in a heap this time, though he does get back to the line of scrimmage, second and goal. Got to find a way to finish, Jason, right? You get down deep in the red zone. That's great. Big play to get down there. Now you got to find ways in tight windows, tight areas, tight spaces to do something against the Florida State defense that gets tougher in these areas. You move Samuels around a little bit here. What do you think? Well, you, you can move Samuels around, but you try to get the ball to him. I mean, right now he's, he's, he's lined up on the top of the screen, I believe. There he is on the outside. Up top. He's with McFadden, the junior quarterback. Hines on the ground, slithering through a hole. And he's down at the three. Trey Marshall, another tackle, third and goal. It's going to be a, an opportunity now in this third down area, not getting much yards rushing as they try to pass. Who are they going to lean on? Their big play wide receiver is at the top here. That's Harmon, but he's got some off coverage, so it's not going to be an easy one. It's a reverse. Myers is stonewalled back at the 10-yard line. Christmas back in the game. Celebrates on a third and goal stop. We got a late flag here, Jason. This could be on 
Florida State. Intentional grounding. Oh. Offensive number 11. The quarterback relinquished possession of the ball by rule. It's intentional grounding. Loss of down at the spot of the pass. Fourth down. Now when you do when you do this, you, you tell the receiver. Throw it away if it's not there. Well, this got carried out so long trying to get away from the defenders that he kind of wasn't really sure what to do there. But it doesn't affect them too much from a positional standpoint. They're still in a chip shot area for a field goal. But again, the second player, different player outside of Finley to throw a pass today. Carson Wise from 30. He was one for three coming in. Wise slides it through. It's a seven-point game. NC State trying to win in Tallahassee up seven. All ESPN coverage is streaming live on the ESPN app. Download now and take ESPN everywhere. NC State trying to hang on with a quarter and a half remaining on a lovely day in Tallahassee. Hot and humid, but sunny all day. And NC State with a field goal from Carson Wise goes back up seven. Florida State will have it from the 25 as we check in with Cassidy. Thanks, Jason. AT&T field pass back and fourth game between Texas A&M and Arkansas at AT&T Stadium. Keith Ford right up the gut and then outside and check out this bulldoze. Capping off a nine-play, 71-yard drive. 24-21 Aggies over on ESPN. Jason Anthony, back to you guys. Cassidy, thank you. Pick your favorite out of these. Well, we've already talked about Penn State. I'm going to go over here with this SEC game. Mississippi State, Nick Fitzgerald, the quarterback, has really been one of the surprise playmakers uh, as far as top-level quarterbacks in the SEC. And I think Georgia right now being undefeated. It's Jack West Patrick just short of the 40-yard line. And it's a run for a first down. More ahead there along with Pratt. Gain of 14. Guys, still no update on Auden Tate, but Anthony Keith Gavin, similar build to Tate, 6'3", 225. Maybe that can be a go-to guy here for Blackman. And number 89, Gavin. He's up at the top here. He had 10 touches against Alabama as Patrick on the run. You were talking about Mississippi State and Georgia. Fitzgerald, it came out this week. He grew up a huge Georgia fan. He had a Georgia area rug in his room at home. He had red and black curtains. That's going to be weird for him. How cool is it, though? I mean, you know, you get to go against a school that you loved and try to maybe emulate the go-to, and all of a sudden you're playing them in one of the bigger SEC games of the year. You're going to tell us you grew up a Pitt fan now? No, I did not. I don't know what kind of fan I grew up. I was by Temple. Nobody, nobody cheered for them when I was growing up. Second down and nine and a whistle timeout, Florida State. That may be one they'll want to have later. Two remaining for the Seminoles. Under five to go, third quarter. Florida State down a touchdown, 20 to 13. And James Blackman in his first collegiate start at 18 years old, 17 for 23, 192 and a touchdown. He did have a fumble, but your overall assessment so far of it? I think he uh, started out a little sluggish, which I expected his first couple snaps of the game. But I'll tell you, he's, he's been strong. He's finished good. He's found a nice target in Tate. The question is, with Tate being hurt now, who's going to be that next guy he goes to? We'll find out here shortly, potentially even on the second down play. Blackman zips it over the middle for his tight end, Ryan Izzo, and it's incomplete. It was his first target today, and he couldn't hang on. Third and nine. Got to catch that ball. You know, tight ends have to do those, the dirty work. He does a lot of it. He's a blocker. He's a pass catcher. He's a pass protector. But again, he throws it right on his gut. Wasn't able to hold it in. Talking about now, nine yards getting taken off because we couldn't be able to catch it. See the balance stay so far, and Jimbo obviously trying to keep that balance, trying to help his quarterback not just throw the ball all over the field today. But third down, so you've got double-A gap pressure in the middle by North Carolina. Ball's on the deck. 
Blackman picks it up and wings it to the sideline, and this is incomplete, out of bounds. It was for Gavin, but he was taken to the chalk by McLeod beautifully as Blackman took a hit. Well, listen, he's a, he's a long kid, a big target. Bradley Chubb ran right through this young man. Chubb, when he gets a chance, you better block this guy. Runs right through the gut. And look, he, he puts a little extra push on him here. Wow, that, that's an impactful hit. Blackman trying to stand in there and deliver a pass. Look, he's even looking at it as he's laying on the ground. He's a tough kid, but I know that hurts. Tyler to putt. Hines back. They come, and Tyler does get it away. And a fair catch called for inside the 20-yard line. Battle of Big Ten unbeaten. Saquon Barkley and number four Penn State against the Iowa Hawkeyes. Saturday night football presented by Wells Fargo starts at 7.30 Eastern, 4.30 Pacific. Also streaming live on the ESPN app. Nate Stanley, Trace McSorley, 67% for McSorley this year. And everybody's talking about the running backs in this one. Saquon Barkley, I can How about the linebackers? Jason Cabinda and Manny Bowen for Penn State. And my man, the outlaw Josie Jewell for Iowa. Actually named after the outlaw Josie Wales, the movie. One of the top tacklers active in the FBS. On the ground, and the ball was loose, but the knee was down first for Hines. And the Wolfpack, it's a gain of eight on the play. Samuels put it on the deck, but it was after the whistle. And you wonder, too, with a guy like Samuels, as many reps and times he gets the ball and the movements, is there any fatigue as he's playing? You see the ball dislodges once he hits the ground, but something to look at. It's hot today in Tallahassee. There's no question, so he's getting a lot of burn. Finley to throw off the quick set, and he's got the comeback for Myers. First down, NC State. Last drive, Blackman just got clobbered. Yeah, and he has no idea who's coming at him. He tries to pick up the ball. And look at that. And Chubb is burying it down into him. And Coach Sanders is giving a little talk, trying to get his confidence back, telling him to breathe, shaking his neck a little bit. A lot of impact on that blow by Bradley Chubb. See those hurries, five hurries, four knockdowns, a couple sacks. This ball is lifeless down to the 45-yard line. Gavin Locklear was the man who triggered it, and it's second down for NC State. Well, I told you earlier that we saw the first one by Jalen Samuels. Don't be surprised if we see a few more. That's the third player outside of Finley to throw a pass in this football game. One thing it tells me is Eli Drink, uh, Drinkwitz, the offensive coordinator, he's trying to win this game and do it at all costs to try to trick this defense of Florida State. And now a whistle before the snap. Previous play is on review. And they're going to take a look at that last play. Maybe for potentially uh, intentional grounding here. I'm not sure. I mean, he's already outside the pocket. But again, at all cost, you talk about all these different formations and pre snap movements. You know, four different players with the quarterback throwing the football. I think they're going to check out this, this hit. Possible targeting. Ah, uh, yeah. Wow. Well, he gets that forearm. It's Jacob Pugh. And again, once you throw it or pitch it back, is he become a runner at that point? And you're free to kind of go at him. We're looking for forcible contact to the head or neck area on a defenseless player. Is he defenseless? Uh, you know, he's really it's a it's a backward lateral. There was no flag indication earlier on that they thought that. Again, that. Uh, it definitely hits him in an area that's illegal. But there was no flag, so it's an interesting referees didn't think initially 
And again, that's that's new in college football the last couple of years. The replay official can stop play for a possible targeting infraction. But what ma makes it interesting is once you throw the ball back to that player, he's not the quarterback anymore. He becomes a runner, a, a guy in the in the backfield. It's a backward pass. I mean, he could have easily taken off and ran, and he made the tackle on him. It's a clean tackle. So. If this is targeting, then Pew will be done for the second half of this game and the first half of the next game for Florida State. After review, there was personal foul targeting the play in the 16 of the defense, 15-yard penalty, players ejected. Any player in the act of or just after throwing a pass is officially considered a defenseless player regardless of what position he is. So he's there in the go. act of throwing, and this is targeting. And, and honestly, as, as I watch Pew go at him, not intentionally, in my opinion, looking at him, but the fact that he hits above the neck area into the helmet, they're going to call that. Yeah, forcible contact, yes. head or neck area, defenseless receiver, those are the two components. Whatever you think of the rule, the application was correct at right, that exactly. time. Hines on the run, and he is down behind the line at the 45. And not, he just lightning fast. I mean, the guy gets off the block, makes a tackle in the backfield. He's a special defensive tackle. You normally don't hear a lot of accolades for those guys, but he's a, a player inside that makes plays by himself at the line of scrimmage. See how Florida State handles being without Pugh and Thomas. Two linebackers that are key to this staunch defense. Sideline route, nothing there. Hines the intended target. Third down, 11 coming up. Hines last year was a receiver caught a lot of balls last season one of the leading receivers coming back to this year moved them now to full time at the tailback position but he had 11 catches against this Florida State defense so they said they were going to utilize him quite a bit now third and long third and 11 let's see if Florida State decides to drop back in coverage or bring a little heat on the quarterback Ryan Finley what do you think they'll do I say you play coverage there's a lot of ground to cover keep everybody in front of you make the tackle don't give up the big play Samuels out of the backfield to the sideline he goes and he's out of bounds. So fourth down NC State. Derwin James ushered him out after the gain of five. And it's punt time for the Wolfpack. And again with that targeting didn't come with a penalty. A 15 yard penalty because there's no flag being thrown. So they lose the player but they didn't lose the yards. Good point. You can't add the flag from the replay booth. You can add the targeting penalty. Fourth punt for Cole. Flag down on the play. And LeBourne on the return gets popped at the 10-yard line. We'll check the marker on a net of 39. We're going to get 99. Greg Burns, oh, excuse me, Brian Burns jumping on the edge. Oh, now it's fourth and one. Yeah. What do you think? Decision time. I think you go. Oh, they're going to decline the penalty. Offside, defense number 99. Penalties decline. First down. Ooh. Extra yard for Teachers Week. A week-long celebration of teachers led by the College Football Playoff Foundation through its Extra Yard for Teachers platform. Visit the College Football Playoff Foundation website at www.cfp-foundation.org to learn more about Extra Yard for Teachers Week and see how you can get involved. First down for Florida State, the freshman quarterback, James Blackman. Akers, the freshman, 
carving the defense. Acres to the 25. We told you about Extra Yard for Teachers Week. We caught up with Derwin James and Jimbo Fisher to talk about it. Uh, I want to give a special shout out to Ms. Muddersill, uh, my, my ninth grade teacher at Armandale High School. Uh, she really taught me a lot, you know, just not only in the classroom, but, you know, just how to be a man and just how to do different stuff. The ability to be able to teach and get someone to understand, not what you know, it's what you can get someone to know, that's a true gift. And I'm going to tell you, we, we underappreciate our teachers in this country, in my opinion. Akers learning from Jimbo Fisher early in his career, and we saw Jimbo Fisher at practice on Thursday. Every pass, he had something for Blackman, his freshman quarterback. He believes that Blackman needs to be let to play, but there are criticisms that have to be levied there. He's got to teach the kid what's right and what's wrong. And it's not just him. He was at getting after receivers for not seeing the sight reads on the hots when they were bringing blitzes in the practice. So, again, these players get pushed to the limits. Jimbo Fisher gets the most out of them. And you show in the games, these guys don't make a lot of mistakes. Pressure's shown. They don't blitz. This one to the sideline and caught. George Campbell tried to run away from the defense. He put the ball on the ground, and a flag comes in. Moorhead might have face-masked Campbell, and we'll check. That's a huge game-changer there from Blackman to the sophomore. Look at his catch. Great job tracking with the arm in front of him. Breaks away. You'll see here. Play resulted in a completed pass. There is no foul on the play. First down. I think, if anything, Campbell got Moorhead's face mask. Exactly. Blackman, I'll tell you, now, these deep balls we've seen him throw have been pretty accurate. Down the sidelines, down the middle of the field. For a kid that hasn't done it before, Chase, I'll tell you, I'm, I've been impressed by his deep ball today. That one goes for 60 yards to Campbell, who had one catch in the Alabama game. Akers in a tailback. Blackman to throw, and no, sir, down he goes. B.J. Hill with the sack for NC State. Guys, just got word. Uh, Auden Tate's shoulder injury will not return in this football game. Wow, a big loss. You're right, and it didn't look like the quarterback and the receiver were on the same page in that last play. Blackman looked like he wanted to throw it to a location, and number 99, uh, excuse me, 89, Gavin, was not there, obviously causing him to get sacked and pulling it down. And that will be all for quarter number three from Tallahassee. NC State looking for its first win against the Seminoles since 2012. College football will continue after this message and a word from our ABC stations. NC State by seven, 15 minutes to go in regulation, and DeAndre Francois, who last year threw for 3,350 yards, 20 touchdowns, had the patella tendon injury in the left knee in the fourth quarter against Alabama, paving the way for the freshman James Blackman, who's got a second down and 15, and that is a big hit. In the backfield, Bradley Chubb one more time, living in the backfield. Listen, you're not going to get Chubb on a read option. He's not going to have to chase it back or play off both guys. He's given a responsibility. Either he takes the running back and he tackles you off the edge, or he's got the quarterback. Obviously, he's got the quarterback here. He's not even going to stop. It makes a big tackle on the backfield. He's been everywhere, and he rarely ever makes a poor decision. This kid's the real deal, man. Big-time player, especially at the next level. Top 10 tackles for loss in NC State history. Blackman under duress. Gets it away. Sideline incomplete. No flag. Murray got tripped up and it's fourth down and 19. Looked like incidental contact. Yeah, and I don't not much there in my opinion. Nooney's going up. They put a, a hand up number three. Pratt, the linebacker, they get a mismatch with they want. But again, Pratt has no idea where the ball is and really it's just can Nooney go up and find it just a little bit overthrown. Blackman wanted it real bad and didn't get the call. Ricky Aguayo is two for three today. He missed from 30 and made from this range twice. 
Aguayo spins it in, 20 to 16. NC State about a minute into the fourth quarter and a dandy. If you've ever wondered what happens when Waldo goes to a rave, you have your answer. That is a lot of glitter. Late night rave. Uh-huh. 20 to 16, your score. NC State will have it just into the fourth quarter in Tallahassee. Into the end zone, a touchback as we take a look at today's All-State All-Hands-In play. Easy for me when I turn the tape on to find out who our impact player was, and it's Bradley Chubb. Able to fight off blocks, great with his technique, the tenacity and hustle to finish plays, causing a huge fumble. You better find somebody to help you tackle to chip him off the edge, and then when you're trying to read option him, you better make sure that fake is good because he's going to wreck your day. And in a college football game where there's so many just outside speed rushers, it's the versatility of Chubb. He can play the run. He can play the twist game we saw with the big hit on Blackman earlier. So just so many facets to his game. He had 22 tackles for lost last year. The second most in NC State history to Mario Williams. That's heady company. Hines is in. And pushing to the 31-yard line. Second down coming up. You guys, one thing to watch here, the Florida State linebacking crew, Matthew Thomas, as we said, out for the rest of the game. Matthew Pugh, or Jacob Pugh, excuse me, ejected. Adonis Thomas was getting worked on, so with all the shifting in motions and formations, this NC State team does pretty hard on inexperienced linebacking core now. Yeah, and enter into the game, Emmett Rice right here only has one tackle. Coming into this football game. After the gain of six, it's second down and four, and Hines withstands the blow and spins across the 40-yard line. Naughty finally took him down. First down on a gain of eight, and NC State willing to run down. And that was Emmett Rice. And the thing about Emmett that makes him different is he bounced right off. The running back went high. He only weighs 200 pounds at the linebacker position. So again, not fully developed as a big inside guy like their starters in Tom, uh, Hoskins and Thomas. And with that being said, Anthony, you wonder if we might start seeing more Reggie Gillespie, the heavier running back, with so many of those linebackers out for FSU. Hines stays in here, and Samuels out into the flat for a gain of about six and a half. Driven out by Marshall, second down. But this is NC State's bread and butter here, the short passing game, the run game. Take what the defense gives you. Get your playmakers in space. Jalen Samuels, number one. Got your back, uh, Hines, in the backfield. You can move him out and be a receiver in that part. And let's give credit. This offensive line for North Carolina State has done a nice job with this defensive front of Florida State, who is very, very good. That was the 10th catch for Jalen Samuels today. A run for Hines, and he speeds up the middle for a first down. The one thing about NC State is they do not turn the ball over very much. Just 13 last year. Finley is so smart with the football. Yeah, listen, you know, Hines has protected it, but the Finley with no interceptions. Again, he, he's great with the pre-snap read. Stays out of those high-risk passes and able to find those guys to give him that time he needs to make completions within the system. The Boise State transfer, a redshirt junior out of Phoenix. Play clock whittled inside of 10. Hines again jostled in the backfield. Derwin James the stop. Second down coming up. Great pre penetration by Nottie. His defensive line, again, they're a handful. And we just talked about North Carolina State's, their, their, their offensive line doing a nice job, but you can't get them every time. So they, they've been able to sustain. What does the lack of linebackers in the game, starting linebackers, do to the defensive line, if anything? Well, it's experience, number one, and coming up. I mean, the defensive line's so good, these guys don't make a lot of tackles. They haven't taken a lot of reps, so just getting those opportunities and not missing tackles like we've seen a few times in the run game. Second and nine for Finley. His receiver fell, and Myers 
Sets up a third down and nine. And Jason, remember what I talked about at the beginning of the game was such a long layoff eye discipline. Well, now you got linebackers in there that haven't seen much game experience at all, and they're having a hard time adjusting to the style of play of the defensive tackles. So how do you exploit that, Rocky? What do you think? I, I think you got to lean on that defensive line. You're seeing Florida State going a lot more nickel and dime right now to get some more experience on the field. Three out of nine on third down for NC State. Will he get it off? And we have a false start. All start. Offense number 50. It's a huge penalty. And the veteran on the line, Tony Adams, in his 38th career start. Timeout, North Carolina State. A timeout before the penalty is the call. So third down when we come back in a four-point game. College football on ABC is presented by Walmart. Walmart, save money, live better. In part by Pacific Life. Experience the power of Pacific. And AT&T. Three national titles, three Heisman trophies, including that one for Jameis Winston from four years ago. Florida State trying to avoid back-to-back -back losses. It would be for the first time in six years. And they're hoping to get a similar defensive performance to last year, not allowing a point to NC State in the fourth quarter last season. They're showing corner blitz on the bottom. Let's see if McFadden brings it. That would leave Harmon alone. He does not come. Finley to throw left side and beautifully done by Lewis to high point the ball. Depending on the spot, it looked like he was at the marker when he pulled it in. Taylor drove him back. And we'll see what the official word is. It is a first down. He's on Levante Taylor, but Lewis, 6'2", 215 pound, 200 pound receiver, just using his body to really pull that and grasp that football. You see how big he is. Running on the field. Big arms. Play made a first down. Play and review. He's a West Palm Beach kid as well. Redshirt junior and they're gonna check that spot. It was very close. We'll see if it's a first down or fourth down after this The play was confirmed and Hines on the run takes it inside the 20 yard line Naheem Hines gets 16 on a first down run for NC State trying to push back against Florida State that's yeah, a full zone stretch. Great blocking up front, but really it's on the back to find the open spaces. I'm starting to pick up his second wind here in the second half. The track All-American, Hines, with some rugged yards there inside the 15. And now Florida State thinned out at the linebacker spot. We'll see how much they have inside of 10 minutes. Yeah, Josh Brown, number 51's in there. So there's a lot of players right now that don't have a lot of reps playing in that linebacker position. And guys down here on field level, the defensive line for Florida State, they look tired, not exactly great at throwing and getting off those blocks. It's a hot day down here. These guys have played a lot of plays. Something to watch here the rest of this game. Second down and six. Shovel pass. Samuels. Touchdown, Wolfpack. It's an outstanding play design, Jason. I'm telling you now. You got high speed players on Florida State's defense find ways to pull him out there's Samuels he's gonna come it's gonna be a shovel pass but the real fake was getting Brian uh, Burns number 95 the defensive end out of the way with the fake pitch I'll tell you very creative by the offensive coordinator Eli Drinkwitz extra point is good 11 point game for NC State 
North Carolina State will test your eyes. Fake pitch underneath route, shovel pass. It's been one of those days, and you better find out Jalen Samuels is a star. This is credit where credit is due. Jalen Samuels with a visit to his linemen, thanking them for the touchdown he just scored to make it a two-score game here. And as you go into the fourth quarter, the one thing you worry about, and we saw some signs of it for Florida State's defense, is tired legs. Remember, this is North Carolina State's fourth game. It's the second game uh, Florida State's played since their opener against Alabama. It's been a long time, 21 straight days of practice, not being on an opponent and playing the length of a football game. That's going to be tough for them. This, that'll be major when they get the ball back on defensive side. And Anthony, with the complexity of this NC State offense, it is hard to think when you're tired. That's a really interesting point there. I mean, people think of fatigue as just physical tired, but there's a mental loss there. Back to the goal line. Campbell on the return. And it's across the 20 yard line. NC State has called a couple of similar actioned plays for scores today. Yeah, it's that pitch motion. The first and late quarter, they fake the pitch to pull down the cover man on the slot receiver. They get a big touchdown. Then they do it again here. Fake pitch, but now they slip it inside on the shovel pass. Nobody's home. Creativity, doing the same thing, getting it to different people. That's the diversity of this, of this offense of North Carolina State. And that's the challenge, what Rocky was saying about the eye discipline of the defenders on the field, especially the backups that have to fill in for some of these injuries. They'll run it with Patrick. And he doesn't have much. We were talking earlier about Eli Drinkwitz being very happy early in his tenure as a coordinator with the cleverness of his play calls. He's now loves, still loves the design, but he's now calling plays for personnel rather than just the strategy. Yeah, he's got some weapons he can trust. And it's also nice when you got a defense as strong as theirs. Chubb and these defensive linemen and linebackers have stepped up and played a nice game. Blackman to throw to the outside, and Campbell slams on the brakes for a first down at the 39-yard line, George Campbell. Blackman's going to be tested now. Not less than nine minutes in this game. You're down by 11. He's never been in this situation before, probably since high school, and he probably was never playing without a lead. So this young man is going to have to divvy it out, put a little responsibility on his shoulders. At this point in the football game, he's going to have to make some completions to some of his other receivers. A young man who went to the Jimbo Fisher football camp and got an offer that day from Florida State. They liked him so much. Chubb bears down on him and labels him. No flag comes in, and Blackman gets buried. And number 22, Rasul, is wide open on the wheel route. Here's Chubb coming around side, just relentless. Again, he sees him coming, maybe turns a little bit away from him a little too soon, but he's got the running back wide open down the sideline, just not able to get that touch and step into that throw because of Chubb, and he's... He's here in the crowd. He wants to he wants to hear those boos, but I'll tell you, he's been a major force in this game and obviously affects the quarterback even when before he, did, he even hit him. How about wanting more jeers from a crowd? Blackman hits Rasul, and it's third down on the way. Well, we show QB hits in a Bama game, and I was wondering how that was going to go today. He's taken a few shots in this one now. North Carolina State's been relentless. Chubb's been most of those hits. This is the Chubb package as well, folks. Taking shots one after another. This isn't the same package we showed you before. This is a different one. These are the shots. So again, you want to talk about one man making an impact. Chubb's everywhere today. This is a, this is a big, huge game for this young man against Florida State. Third down. Blackman under pressure, had to hurry it. It's incomplete. Murray overthrown, so fourth down, and again, Dave Huxtable said we don't necessarily have to hit him, though they have. They just wanted to make him uncomfortable, and that was the case on that third down. 
You're right. I, you know, they can't blitz every play, but when you got defensive linemen that can make those moves and do those things, and Jimbo's saying, listen, we got to finish blocks. We can't let guys come off the edge and take free hits on our quarterback like Chubb's been doing most of this game. But Anthony, they have not helped out on Chubb at all. Does it not make sense to max protect and go to some two, three man rounds to help that O line out a bit? In our meeting with Jimbo Fisher, what's the one thing he told us? We're going to try to wear the ribs out of number nine. I haven't seen haven't one seen chip yeah. block, you're right, one. on the defensive end today. Tyler sends it inside the five. And well done by the special teams. 53-yard punt as we take a look at our Pacific Life game summary. And the Wolfpack try to hang on for a first win in five years against Florida State. Finley's been the guy we expected. Clean game, no turnovers by him. He's been impressive with his decision-making. The defense, especially up front, we just showed you the package. Chubb and company doing a great job. And Blackman respectable so far in this game. But again, can the defense stop it? Again, let's watch the conditioning of the defense right now in the fourth quarter. They got this offense pinned back. Can they keep them back there? Or will North Carolina State take advantage of, of tired legs? How will we see the conditioning, yes or no, good or bad? I'm going to lean on the high side that it's going to be a bit poor, and, and it'll, it'll be defined in this drive right here. Samuels in motion, Hines the tailback, and he's bottled up as we'll check in with Cassidy. Jason, we got nonstop crazy going on between AM and Arkansas. Christian Kirk with his second touchdown of the game. This one, a 100 yard kickoff return. Aggies up 40 36 with under five to play over on ESPN. And coming up on ABC, number five USC visiting Cal. First time these two teams are both entering the matchup unbeaten since 2004. Jason, Anthony, back to you. We're all shocked that AM would be playing a crazy game, <laughs> by the way. Just floored by that. Wild one there. NC State trying to hang on here. Literally, it's a safety. Wow. Shotgun. In the end zone. Poor snap. Awful scenario right there for North Carolina State. And in the pistol, ball just gets high and away from Finley. Does the smart thing, to be quite honest with you. Knocking that out of the backfield, out of the end zone. Safety's a lot better, Jason, than, and then having somebody pounce on for Florida State for a touchdown. The, the fortune there is that it was an 11-point game, so it's still a two-score game for yeah. NC State. But Bradbury, the former guard who moved over to center this season with a rough snap. Well, and what happens is you're going to get an opportunity here where they're going to probably punt this away on the kickoff. You're going to get potentially good field position. So, again, crunch time now. Six minutes, just under six and a half minutes. It's going to lot. It's going to be on the quarterback's back. Got to finish up front with these defensive linemen. Let's see if Jimbo gives them some help with Chubb on the outside in a protection and sacrifice and one of his receiver slash running backs out into the route. What do you tell Blackman here if you're Jimbo Fisher? What's your message? Oh, if I'm the quarterback, I'm telling Coach, Coach, can we get some help back here? <laughs> Chip or something. I'm just saying, Blackman's been good, I think, in his past game. When, he's, when it's been clean and he's had an opportunity, he's delivered nice catchable balls and laid it in there. He just needs a little more time and a little more finish by Florida State. And I think the other thing Jimbo Fisher tells Blackman is, look, again, back to the same thing. Don't try to be perfect. There's still enough time. You don't have to force a throw at this point. Still plenty of time to get back in this football game. NC State has had enough of the close but no cigar thing. They had trouble two years ago against bowl eligible teams going winless. Last year, they picked up four of them but wanted more in eventually a just over 500 season. And let's see how good a field position Florida State ends up with. Very good down the sideline and a beautiful return for the Seminoles. Once you get your best player
to get back there and make a play. Derwin James, right, number three. He's an explosive guy. Put him back on the kickoff return. Gets shaken up there, walks it off. But that's a huge turn of events there to get them some good field position. Not a common place for him, but you see he reads the block. And good job not falling after he takes that hit. And there he goes up the sidelines, stepped out of bounds maybe a little earlier, too. But a nice return for the leader on defense. First down in NC State territory. Blackman tries to whistle it out wide, and it's incomplete. Roseboro with the pressure. Darian Roseboro, the junior. Yeah, you know, as a quarterback, you always imagine it's going to be like practice. You're going to have a clean pocket. Nobody's going to be there. But now you see continuously guys coming through. You see a tackle that's got a responsibility, but he's late getting off. Number 70, excuse me, the guard Minshew. So, again, that, that will frustrate a quarterback, but he's got to keep going. He's a tough kid. That's the number one thing Jimbo said. He's a tough guy, and he can take those hits. Let's see if he can lead his team. Quick throw to Murray to the sideline, and third down coming up. This FSU offensive line was 106th in the nation last year in sacks allowed per game, and NC State has exploited it at points today. They have, and it's been that one-on-ones between really Chubb and whatever man's been on him, preferably the tackles, but no help from anyone else trying to chip him or give him some opportunities to extend the pass situations. Watch the line stunts, watch the twist games by NC State's defense here on third down. They move just before the snap, and a flag comes in. Wow. Rocky, you were right on it. Some movement. Start, offense number 74, five-yard penalty, first down. And that's Derek Kelly, the left side. That's his third penalty, movement penalty in this football game. And again, when you haven't seen a lot of these live reps because you haven't played many games, those things kind of get you antsy as a football player. And you can see Jimbo a little frustrated there. Just can't get things to go the way he wants it. Watch the movement. Rocky called it. He gives a tap to his back, but he just he's too early on his kick. Blackman pressured again. He throws Blackman down the sideline. Big hit over there. Is it a catch? No, out of bounds. And that was close. It's a heck of an effort by Patrick. Again, Blackman being chased for his life on the backside. He throws this one up. Great concentration. Yeah, the ball, well, no feet really hit inbounds there. Good job pulling it down, but. Guys, it's amazing to watch the communication between the defensive line. They're all constantly talking with one another. Hey, I'm going to do this. Why don't we try this? Certainly on the same page. Well, you would expect that, Rocky. Eight seniors on this defense, majority of them the front four, the two middle linebackers. This group's played together a lot of snaps, 178 starts between these these guys. Oh, now Florida State calls a timeout. They only have timeout. one left. Florida State. You might need First that for the clock timeout. now. Well, what they're looking at is they feel that Patrick's foot may have hit before he came down, but I just didn't see the control. I think his first foot was out of bounds. Yeah. But Florida State burns a timeout that they might like to have later. Right. Meantime, NC State, this is a team that nearly changed the complexion of the national championship race last year. You may remember mid-October, Kyle Bambard to beat the Tigers into the sea of orange. He missed it. Then Clemson gets a Watson touchdown pass in the first overtime. The interception from Finley, Clemson with the victory. Then, against the Seminoles, November the 5th, Sean Boone could have put the game away. Didn't. Francois to Rudolph, the next play. So, the class of the ACC nearly fell to NC State last year. It didn't happen. Does Dave Doran's team have enough with five and change to go today to do it? Well, great fight by this North Carolina State team. Give Coach Doran some credit. I'll tell you, this team 
You know, they've come in here multiple times. 2005 is the last win for them in Tallahassee, but it's been a while. It takes time. NC State's not getting the five stars every single year. They got to build their product. They got to build their players, get them meshed up so you can find eight seniors now playing on this defense that it comes together so they can have a good season. Florida State has to get to the 30-yard line. Fourth and 11 for the freshman Blackman. Pressure coming. Free runner. He keeps his feet. Blackman throws on the go. Incomplete. He wanted Murray. Turnover on downs. It's been, it's been constant pressure all day. Well, you'll see the pressure. They bring the backers up, and again, he hasn't had much of this. It's been clean in practice. They always pick up the blitzes, but when it's live in the game, you got movement shifts. Rocky talked about it. Then you bring backers, an unaccounted for player coming through. What do you do with the football? And again, it's that process in his mind. How f it goes fast, it go goes quickly, and his decision process sometimes get tricked. And Jimbo, look, he's starting to see signs now of the true freshman. Steady dose of Hines coming, you'd imagine, as he spins it back inside to avoid going out of bounds. And look, Florida State, after that loss to Alabama, if it was just the loss to Alabama rather than Francois as well, we'd be talking about a national championship contender yeah. still. And now you fall to 0-2. Who knows where this season ends up? Yeah, you're right. And unfortunately for them in this game, you haven't played as many games as the majority of college teams across the country North Carolina State now knows how with this big offensive line some of these backs and this four minute offense now that you're going to try to turn the clock you got a tired defense that's only got one game under their belt Hines again to the short side and nothing there Brian Burns with the stop third down that that might be counterintuitive to the people watching how could you be tired if you've only played one game why is that well you know you can only go through practice and simulate so many plays in the heat outside going four quarters going against live the, the pounding the back and forth of the momentum momentum of the game you don't have that North Carolina State this is their fourth time doing it so it's just one of those disadvantages coming in Jason there's no substitute for game speed right game sort of competition those sort of reps you can practice all day long run sprints game shape is a completely different story shovel pass Samuels more guarded and gold there than white as Burns makes the stop so fourth down Florida State has one timeout and they are going to use it now to expend the final one so 340 to go and we'll be back shortly 27 18 NC State trying to put it away Bradley Chubb has been mammoth today for NC State, living at the hip of the freshman quarterback, James Blackman. His defense will have to get one more stop as it's punt time and a flag comes in on the punt. Ball start. Offense number 42, five-yard penalty, fourth down. Just the sixth penalty for NC State compared to 11 for Florida State. You know, Chubb's a game wrecker, and right, that's exactly what he is. And you better put some help. And if anybody's watching this, future teams that are going to play against him, you better find ways to chip him. You better find ways to get him off his game, because if you just let him go through that process every single snap, he's going to beat you every single time. He's relentless. He gives you 100% effort every play. And then oh, the And they get there. Punt blocked. Ball is loose and out of bounds. Brian Burns got in for the Seminoles at a huge moment with the season on the line. Just when you think you've played all these snap at the defensive line, you got starters missing, you still give maximum effort, and those four guys up front, we've been talking about them from Florida State, 
Watch 99 on the outside. He's going to come inside, and he's going to just, it's a hustle play. Find the football, lays out. He's got some long arms now. Saw him in practice. There's some of the longest arms I've seen on a defensive lineman, and he just lays out. Bit of a casualness in the punting situation there for North Carolina State. Really turned it around. He blocked one last year for the first Florida State punt block since 2010. It came against Syracuse. This one in the opener in ACC play in 2017. Blackman to throw. Open man and incomplete. Gavin had it slip through his hands. Second down. Kid Glass almost had a pick. Again, now James Blackman's got to get dialed in and relax. You got a wide receiver wide open here. You got to just deliver the ball. It's a little high, a little bit of, he's got a, a big swinging throw, but you got to be able to put it on him, make, let him make a big play, a little quickness on that. Now the receiver should have caught it. If it hits your hands, that's the old cliche, right? Pull it down. But again, it's got to be a smoother operation for the freshman. There's pace on that ball too. Exactly. Blackman's missed five of his last six. The 18-year-old over the middle with a connection this time inside the 20-yard line to Gavin. Third down, clock moving. Same play. So they just ran it. They had a defender in the area, but they're able to make the completion. Moving toward three minutes. Blackman under pressure again. This is incomplete. He wanted the cross to Gavin. Fourth down. You got to take the field goal here, right? It's a two-score game. Exactly. Down nine, you got to get points. You're going to need that field goal. They're going to bring out Aguayu. But again, another hit on the quarterback there. They're starting to add up this defensive line, taking advantage of those hits and an inac inaccurate pass for the incompletion. Ricky Aguayo, who was six for six last year against Ole Miss, three for four today, all within 37 yards this one from 34 with the play clock dwindling the kick is good 27 21 301 to go no timeouts for the Knowles how will we end two of the biggest games this weekend just about underway, TCU, Oklahoma State, number 16 and number 6. Then at 7 o'clock, number 17, Mississippi State, and number 11, Georgia. Both games also streaming live on the ESPN app. Mason Rudolph for Oklahoma State, 300 yards and three touchdowns in four straight games. And we'll see what he has for the Horned Frogs today. You can onside kick with 3.01 to go. You can get a stop. Three and out gets you the ball back. You can. And this could be one of those situations where they try to pop one. In my opinion, I don't know if they'll have enough time to get four plays off. They're going to test the waters. They do kick it deep. Into the end zone and a touchback. So five seasons ago, 2012, NC State and Florida State. Mike Glennon to Brian Underwood on fourth down. And the Wolfpack beats the Seminoles 17-16. The number three Florida State team goes down. That's the last win of the series for NC State, though they've had late leads in the series. Well, listen, this offensive line, if they want to close this game out, they're going to run the football. You don't want to pass. You don't want that incompletion to be a possible clock stoppage. Florida State's going to have to dig deep. This defensive line has done a fantastic job trying to take it on. But North Carolina State has answered every single time they've gotten the ball. Naheem Hines jockeys through the line and gets a couple of yards, gives him three. Burns again with the tackle after his punt block. So second down, play clock moving, and we're under three minutes. The big decision will be if North Carolina State gets more yards closer to the to the sticks here, do you chance it with a pass? I mean, that's kind of where you want to go, or do you put the trust in your defense? Florida State hasn't been as explosive. Remember, Auden Tate is out for this game, the big play receiver that that Blackman's been going to. So again, we're going to put it in the hands of the offense to see if they can turn it out. See who's tougher at the line of scrimmage.
Finley takes the play clock down close to zero, and that is stonewalled in the backfield by the Florida State defensive line. Hines was dropped, and third down coming up as Blackman gets a tutorial in case he gets it back. And there's a situation this young quarterback's never been in, right? He had, we might may get the opportunity to get the ball back and try to lead a game-winning drive. I'll tell you, I give credit to this defense. They fought the entire game. They've got injuries. They got guys out. They're starters. These four defensive linemen up front: Sweat, number nine, Christmas, Naughty, Burns. These guys have been going hard every single snap, trying to maintain this offense of North Carolina State. Third down and seven. Do they throw? The answer is no. They bounce it outside with Hines. Naheem Hines puts it away. On third and seven, he gets 15 and secures it for NC State. One of the biggest playmakers in last year's game. They weren't able to get the win. And my man Himes here just following the big guys, great blocks. And I'll be quite honest with you, it's just a matter of time. I just think the guys up front for Florida State's D-line, it was finally too much. And you can see some dejectedness in the defended players for Florida State. It's a great run, stays in bounds. And this is a heck of a game and a win for North Carolina State. 12 years since they won at Doak Campbell Stadium. 24 carries, 94 yards for Hines. None bigger than those 15 to salt it away. Heck of a job, and I give credit. This man right here is a born leader. He told. He looks like he's a guy that told this team, I told you so. He came out and performed. He was a difference maker today. And on offense, you got to give credit to Finley. Didn't turn the ball, ball over. No turnovers for this team. They played smart. They didn't let Florida State take advantage of the situation. And they were able to come out of here with a win. And Florida State, which could have been a national championship contender because they lost to Alabama in the opener. That one loss, not so bad. Dave Doran will celebrate on their field. NC State, 27-21 in Tallahassee. A signature win for Doran and the Wolfpack. It's a great picture right there. Doran, his stud defensive end, Chubb. I'll tell you, Chubb was a game record today. Just a heck of a game, heck of a performance. Well coached, great plan today. Give North Carolina State a, a ton of credit. First back-to-back -back losses in 77 games for Florida State. NC State gets the win. That's all from here in Tallahassee. Our final score, 27-21 NC State. So long, everyone. Coach, la Coach, last year you were really two plays away from, from two big wins. Today you get that big win. How does it feel? I'm just happy for these kids. These guys have done everything. They've done everything. They've been so loyal to this program, to this university, to our coaching staff. It's about guys like him and all these other guys that came down here and played their butts off. That's why you coach. It's about serving people. And today they took care of business. Coach, your offense moved the ball. Your defense was so tough and so physical. Just talk about the emotion of this game and how well they played. Well, we expected to win. I mean, we had a great game plan. I think Hawkstable and Drank did a great job putting together the plans the kids executed. That's what it's all about, man. It's uh, Every week it's a new journey. Love the guys I'm working with. Love where I'm at. Love these players. Congratulations, Coach. Thanks a lot. Go Pack. See you in Raleigh. Bradley, a dominating performance by you today. Just talk about your mindset coming into this game. Um, over the past couple of years, man, I had a lot of heartbreak with this team. Been up a lot and, and lost them in the last minutes. But I'm just glad. I, I, that was my motivation for this, for this whole game. You can hear me on the sideline the whole time. I just did it for these, for these dudes, man. The seniors, man. I just told everybody this is our last time. Man, I just want to make it special, man. We just, we just went out there and did that. So the, the, the last year, some of the things you went through was motivation for this year coming yeah, out, huh? Definitely, definitely. That's the main reason I came back, because I knew this team could do so much more than what we did last year. We had a lot of heartbreak. And then, I mean, we just need to turn that corner. And now we're here. So do you think that this win puts NC State on the map. I definitely do. I definitely do. Uh, a ranked opponent came into, come into that house and, and, and win the game. So, I mean, we had a, played a great game. We stick to the game plan, didn't do, try to do too much, and we just had a great time. Congratulations. Appreciate that. Have a good one. In his fifth season, Dave Doran gets a signature win today in Tallahassee, 27-21. NC State hangs on against the Seminoles' first win in the series since 2012. And Anthony Beck.
This was an NC State team facing a freshman quarterback, and they pinned their ears back. Bradley Chubb was outstanding. You're right. It came down to the pressure they put on uh, just uh, James Blackman in this football game. You want to make sure that you bring it to him, hit him. Even the hits affected him in this football game. And then offensively for this football team, no turnovers. That's the most important thing. When you go on the road, especially at a place like Tallahassee, where they got tremendous defensive players, you don't want to give freebies away. And they were able to do that. It starts with Chubb. You know, he's a guy that really they, they tried to block one-on-one -on -one the entire game. I was kind of surprised that Jimbo Fisher didn't try to help his tackle but his energy and his explosiveness through the game, his relentlessness, just an example here, one-on-one, -on -one, didn't have a back to help, then they loop him inside. Just so many different ways he beats you at the line of scrimmage, and he's hard to fool. You run that read option, it's been there, done that. J just a strong performance by him. So how do you go forward if you're Florida State? You're 0-2 in a season that looks so promising at the outset. Yeah, well, you know, they needed a game under their belt, number one. I mean, obviously not getting the win was huge, but you saw them wear down a bit in the fourth quarter. This is going to help propel them. And, of course, with James Blackman, he needs more snaps. He's got to get more reps. He'll get more this week in practice, and they'll get another game under their belt. But, uh, you know, defensively, they still have a chance. As good as this defense is, got a little tired late in this football game, but they're going to pick up steam. Still got a chance, though, within their division, within their conference, that they continue to put some wins together and a big, you know, big game down the road with Clemson. No win for NC State and reason to party in the locker room for the Wolfpack. They go to 3-1, 27-21, your final score.